Uh, we live. Uh, we live. Seems good. All right, let's continue with space exploration. And we were just at the point where we have uh, vulcanite core fragments and coal coming in from Granus. Uh, and while we were figuring out how we were going to do our resupply for Granus, uh, we actually came up with a pretty good way to do resupply uh, for our orbital sites. Which pretty much comes down to uh, make a request system that looks for 500 stacks of uh, each resource that we need uh, continuously, or at least each resource as uh, each solid resource that we need continuously uh, for science. And we're going to set up a, uh, a cargo rocket that's just going to load up the difference of whatever is missing from 500 stacks of each thing. Uh, therefore, it is going to get to um, max cargo size and launch automatically. Um, we've set this up to supply uh, media defense installation ammo, cargo rocket sections, and iron plate. Uh, to Granus, so that Granus can send us back uh, the Vulcanite core fragments and coal. Uh, we need the iron plate because we need iron plate to make solid rocket fuel. Um, and because this is K2, we will eventually run out of the crude oil uh, and have to make another outpost or two for that. But I think that is going to take quite a while. Savi the Fox, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Factory must grow. Indeed it must. I was thinking today I would like to, not as a high priority, maybe as soon as we've got something that we have to wait for, um, I would like to design some, uh, some science blocks so that we don't have to keep getting them from Nalvis, uh, for the tech cards, that is. Oh, I meant to put these glass plates back up here. Let's do that. Even to other planets, indeed. That's how space exploration be. Alright, let's drop off our text plates. I suppose I could whip up a little robot network here. Um, how about we put in exactly one construction bot? And we'll run this with... what's the minimum power consumption? 50 kilowatts. So as long as we get over 50 kilowatts. Uh, so three wind turbines? Oh, I've already got them. No, no, no. Stop, stop, stop. Oh, I'm still making these small text plates. Wow. I didn't realize I queued up that much. I guess I could put together a little assembly machine as well uh, to make the text plates. We'll throw glass in here. Uh, where do I want to place this? How about... How about on this nasty looking rock where I don't actually want to build... Um, anything, actually. So we'll put the RoboPort here, assembly machine here, input chest here, and I have a trick for this. We're gonna set the, because I don't really have the inventory space to move all of this at once, uh, set the limit for bots and stuff to zero for this chest, and we're going to use uh, even distribution. I might have to change the setting. Yeah, it's too fast. Um, we change the setting from even distribution, uh, the reaction time of it, to very long, and then just drag Wait, what? Oh, it's on the ground now. 
All right. Well, I still want to demonstrate this. Uh, put all this in here. Pick one up. Set this to not allow anything. And then control, click, and drag. And that's going to put all of our glass text plates into this chest. Fantastic. All right, we need uh, at least three wind turbines. Probably more would be better. And a substation. And a passive provider. I guess we might end up picking up some stone. Let's put a storage chest here as well. Alright. Small text plate glass. Glass goes in here, actually. And... Alt mode on, please. Andy Gaming, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, it's going to be very slow until the robo port is charged, but that's okay. And I'm just going to put literally one construction bot in here, because it really isn't going to have that much to do. Now well, make it two. No lonely construction bot. Good. How about you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Alright, so now we can... I'll have to periodically drop glass off here. Um, was it actually just one glass to one text plate? Really? Hmm. I didn't think it would be that uh, expensive. Let's go pick up some more glass. It's over here. Glass. And I think I left some bots behind as they jumped out to finish this build. Or most of it. Let's go finish it while we're here as well. So we don't have to get the construction train back here. Okay, I don't think the construction train has cliff explosives, now that I think about it. What's the plan for today? Uh, set up properly the logistic lines between here and Granis, which we do have working a little bit already. And uh, the moment I get some time where we're waiting for something, I'd like to start designing uh, science blocks on planet. We also need to do Vulcanite Core Fragment Processing, which I think we'll put here somewhere, maybe? Um, well, definitely close to... I'd like to put it right here, because Vulcanite Core Fragment's very small stack size, so we want to limit the distance that the train has to go. Um, I might start designing that block right now, actually. Um, so let's see. We've got some core fragment processing blocks already. I might steal from those, I might not. This is vanilla. And this is... Whoops. Uh, cryonite core fragments. There might be a change or two that I wanted to make to the vanilla core fragment block, but I don't remember. Welcome, welcome. Fraser K. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Um, Alright, so I want to go with more or less the same layout. Probably. I don't know... Well, it'll depend on the ratios. Like... I was originally just going to do about as many uh, pulverizers here as I could comfortably fit under some beacons. But uh, the ratios pretty much demanded not that much uh, 
core fragment processing and we crammed in some bryonite processing on the spot. Um, so I imagine we're going to get something very similar with uh, vulcanite core fragments, actually. Let's lay out some blocks like so. And I wouldn't be terribly surprised if we end up swapping some recipes for this and calling it done. Um, let's see. Cryonite versus Vulcanite core fragment processing. This has liquid output, so it's definitely going to be a little bit different. It's only one fluid though, so we should be able to connect that somewhere pretty easily. Um, as for the solids, 20 in 0 to 4, 25 and 1, 20 in 0 to 4, 19 and 1. So this spits out more vulcanite than this spits out cryonite, um, but not by much. What's this? 7.6 per second. That uses 8 per second. Okay. Um, I don't suppose the one recipe that consumes vulcanite directly is going to be about the same shape as this. Let's see. There's some stuff in space that uses it. So we do want to put it into the rail network, actually. Um, and then... Then we've got a whole Coverex-like situation. I think that's after we get enriched vulcanite. Stone and crushed vulcanite. So I think that's going to be similar to this, kind of. Um, so three solids come out of here. Stone, crushed, vulcanite, and enriched. And we can turn it into matter. Okay. So we want to export vulcanite to the rail network. That alone might have me rethink this a little bit. Um, let's copy the positioning of these. Uh, what you call them? Pulverizers. And that should be all fitting under one beacon. If we want to upgrade it later, and we could also do it under a couple of smaller beacons, just barely. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Vulcanite core fragments. If we do nothing but that here, what do we get? Uh, 30 per second, 2.4 per second, 1.2 per second, and some fluid. Um, that's pretty good, actually. I mean, very manageable without belts. Oh, and I think one of the reasons I did it like this here, the stack size of cryonite is actually really small. That one recipe that needs vulcanite, other than processing... Uh, wait a sec. Uh, other than crushed vulcanite, turning it into matter, it was matter liberation data. Matter liberation. So this uses 1% matter liberation data. And we get a little bit of particle stream back. I don't see myself doing that, actually. Yeah, it's literally basically just turning 10 Vulcanite into 5 Particle Stream. Um, but Particle Stream... Uh, how do we make it? Like, originally? 
There's okay, so all of these resources have a version of this, which I don't think I'm gonna do. Um, where we can, I think I if if I'm gonna void stuff, um, using this kind of advanced thing, I think I would just like to turn it into matter instead. Um, let's see. Sand and plasma stream and material testing packs for some reason. Yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to use that other recipe, which means, uh, if I'm not mistaken, vulcanite itself is going to be like cryonite itself. We don't want to put it into the rail network because of the very small stack size combined with the fact that it just doesn't have uses elsewhere. I could set it up so that if there's a surplus, we throw Vulcanite out to go into matter. Um, I'm pretty sure there's probably a similar use for Rionite powder, maybe? There is not. Oh wait, no, Cryonite itself. The powder has a much better stack size. Uh, let's see, Cry... Cryonite rod. Wait. I'm looking for cryonite. There it is. Uh, let's see. Matter fusion. 1% fusion testing data. 1% matter synthesis data. 50 particle stream. And what do we get for it? Oh. A cryonite and contaminate a okay, okay, I don't see myself doing that. Yeah, this is actually just things that make cryonite. What about what cryonite goes into? It's pretty much the same deal, yeah. Um, I think I would like to avoid throwing out vulcanite itself into the rail network in that case. Um, so how do we deal with... Vulcanite... was it a pulverizer only? Uh, pulverizer or mechanical facility. It's gonna spit out stone, crushed vulcanite, and enriched. Okay then. I wonder if we're gonna get a similar ratio. It's gonna look okay here. Crushed vulcanite. Uh, let's see. That is way underperforming for Vulcanite. What's the ratio, I wonder? Uh, 2.5 versus 12. So, like, 5 to 1 to have a surplus? Twelve per second. Twenty-four per sec. How many of these do we need to get a multiple of two point five? Way too many. We need five to get sixty. Twenty-four to get sixty. This is twelve. Maybe I should do... Maybe I should do one blo one whole block to process Vulcanite, like this. And... Well, then we have the problem of the small stack size. How quickly would it fill up a train? Um, let's see. Uh, three stacks per second. So it would take 26.67 seconds to fill a train. That's a bit fast. D hose. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
Um, I am moving core fragments uh, across space and into rail blocks. And I think, like, that's bad enough. We don't want to... We don't want to have more things than we're going to need to, uh, that we're going to have to move really, really often with trains. So... I don't know, maybe five to one? So that's going to consume just under half a stack of core fragments per second. Actually, yeah, no, this could this could be a really good layout right here. So we're just going to have our Our Vulcanite goes straight down here. 12.5 per second we can easily deal with on... Whoa, 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 no, okay. Uh, we can easily deal with that on a red belt. And... There's no other input for this, right? Nope. Let's see, 6 per second. Well, we may as well just use a loader for this. And then filter output 2.5 per second. That can be a filter inserter. Vulcanite. And then stone and uh, vanilla core fragments are just going to go somewhere else. I think I'll put them up here. Hmm. Actually, I could use a filter splitter for this. The total output from this is going to be, what, 12, 14, 15, 16? 16 per second. Barely more than half of a red belt. Um, but just to ensure we get proper flow, we'll do something a little bit like... Like what? Like this. And like this. And like this. And like this. Are we going to have room for regular beacons if I do that? Probably. We could make it work. Let's move this up one. And move this down one. Uh, and then we're just going to do Vulcanite goes this way. Don't leave anything on the belt. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So everything's going to come out of these solids. Vulcanite's going to go this way. Uh, everything else is going to go this way. And uh, I think 
Enriched Vulcanite and Crushed Vulcanite. We've got two separate things to deal with later on. Crushed Vulcanite goes into Enriched Vulcanite. So these things are going to stay together, it feels like. Crushed Vulcanite and Enriched Vulcanite. Crushed Vulcanite and Enriched Vulcanite. Um, yeah, literally the only recipes, apart from Delivery Cannon and Crushing, um, we keep both of these resources together every time. Maybe I should process the rest here. What's the stack size like? Uh, 50 and 50, not too bad. Um, but definitely we want uh, stone and vulcanite core fragments to be output up here. One, two, three, four, five. And one, two, three, four, five. Fantastic. All right, so this is going to go here. That's not quite right. Uh, and we're just going to do some belts. Oh, I'll, I'll put delivery cannons here. That'll make um, inputting to this nice and easy and clean. Alright, so we're going to get stone out of these. Um, I haven't decided yet, but tentatively, if we're going to output both of these things to the rail blocks, then crushed and enriched are going to go down here, uh, and stone again is going to go back this way. How much stone do we get? Uh, it's hard to say because Vulcanite is going to be slightly oversupplied, so we're not actually going to get the full amount out of this. Oh, no, that's not quite right. We're not going to get the same amount of stone out of this, so... But we're going to get slightly less than two stone per second out of this whole thing. And uh, a bit less than one core fragment per second. So I think Vulcanite core, uh, regular core fragments are going to go up here. Uh, we'll need a splitter. There's nothing else on this belt, right? Oh, I want to put stone onto it, though. Uh, how about... How about what? Let's have a peek at what processing this stuff is going to look like as well. Because I might, I might do it in this half of the block. So... There's crushed vulcanite that goes... whoops. Goes into a centrifuge goes into an industrial furnace to make vulcanite blocks. Hmm. And what about enriched? Enriched goes to centrifuge for the same reason. Centrifuge to make iridium blast cake. Uh, furnace to make this. I think we're going to export it. Yeah, I think that would be easiest. And the stack size isn't that bad. Okay, uh, in that case... I could just do a big container to make it easiest uh, to deal with all the outputs. I think I will do that. It's going to be a lot more elegant than the belt filters that I would otherwise come up with here. Um, so let's see. Maybe something like this. So everything except for Vulcanite itself is going to end up in this uh, chest. 
And then we're going to output regular core fragments. Uh, that's going to go this way. I think I'll use some blue belt for this part just because underground belt distance. Much neater. And over here. That's going to look a bit different, I guess. Hmm. What looks less weird? I don't like this very short underground. Oh, I could make this one a red, but then this one would look out of place. Oh, it's the exact same problem anyway. I think I'll just do it like this. Alright, so this is vanilla core fragments. This is stone. Uh, this one here is... Probably whatever's higher volume. Crushed vulcanite. I don't know, I feel like putting the enriched vulcanite here. It doesn't actually make a difference. Let's say enriched vulcanite and crushed vulcanite. And we will, of course, need to pick up... How much uh, fluid are we getting? Four per second? That's uh, not a whole lot. Um, let's put that pickup on the same one as the uh, Enriched Vulcanite, because both of those will be really slow. Alright, so pumps are going to go here. I could put them here, but like... Nah, it's fine. I don't care if it takes a moment to load this train with fluid. It's hardly ever going to need to happen. Unfortunately, this doesn't quite line up. This isn't as bad. How about... Like this. And we'll do the old underground pipes thing. Uh, which one? It doesn't really matter which one here. What's more consistent aesthetically? Inside, 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 inside. And then outside, outside. Okay. Fantastic. Oh, this one doesn't actually need the underground pipe. Uh, I could do a steel one here. We want to keep things neat. Alright, cool. And we don't have to worry about pumps or anything because the flow is going to be so slow. So that is... Uh, let's see. Standard pickup station... Uh, all of these resources are infinite, so we don't have to worry about the encoded network ID stuff. And then we test. Oh, we need a... we need an input first. Uh, Vulcanite core fragments, I guess the input is going to have to be on the outside. Clearly. Didn't think that far ahead. But this actually lines up beautifully. What's the rate? 
Uh, what? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Only two per second in. Alright, cool. Except this one doesn't actually take an input from there. One, two, three, four, five. That's not quite right. There we go. Captain True, good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How do you feel about this playthrough? Uh, so far, quite, quite well, actually. Do you mean in terms of, like, how my designs are looking, or the changes to SE, or what? Can we fit a regular beacon here? I'd definitely like to be able to do that. Uh... Yes? It's gonna put these... Oh wait, that's not right. That's the same machine over here. Hmm. How are we gonna fit our bacon here? We're not. This one's easy. This one is a bit tricky. If we're going to have the proper output. Oh, I could do it down here. Oh. Oh, that's really easy, actually. If we're a little bit sneaky about it. Yeah. That's kind of cool. Alright, so regular beacon is going to fit like so. Um, that has to go there, actually. We can see they're all double beaconed, so that's... Uh, we know we've got room for our beacons for our upgrade path. More your state of mind for the challenge that you're really enjoying doing it well? Yes. Yeah, I'm quite liking this. Absolutely. Alright. Uh, so that beacon... Oh, wait, what? How have we got... That's not quite in the middle of all of these, but I don't care enough to change it, I don't think. Unless... I would have to move all of these machines and stuff up one tile. I think that's fine. That's probably fine. Makes this part look a bit less weird as well. But now we're at the very awkward distance here where it looks slightly too long not to use an underground and too short to use an underground. Um, cool. So our beacon is perfectly balanced as all things should be. Um... Maybe I'll move it all over... No, this is as close to center as it can be over here already. So that's fine. What's the rate that we're consuming core fragments? It's really slow. So this auto picking up from the bulk rail unloaders will be fine. Let's put our undergrounds in. fit. And we don't need to bring any fluids or anything. No other inputs. So nice and easy setting up the testing. We're just going to put super inserters like this. Vulcanite core fragments, like this. Give it some power. And 
The last thing I hadn't figured out was where the substations were going to go. Oh, this isn't... Oh no. Wait, what have I done? Did I move all those wrong... the wrong direction? I, I, I moved them the wrong direction. For the obsessive, uh... Beacon placement. So I actually need to move all of these down a couple of tiles? One, two. Uh, and one, two. And that should still reach. Almost. Damn it. Alright, so... Beacon... Perfectly in the middle. Touches all the machines. Is perfectly in the middle of them. Fantastic. Missed the stream and yesterday. Did you sort out coal deliveries to Hagen? I did indeed. Um, since we were already setting up... Ore fragment deliveries... Um, all I did was throw together another cargo rocket... In the same robot network. Um, with the same launch on cargo full conditions. However, the one thing I haven't done yet is a proper a proper block for receiving cargo, la uh, cargo rockets at cargo landing pads. Because I forgot that spaceships crash and we need to cover a pretty significant area. Um to pick up the pieces when they do crash with robot networks. So this isn't ideal at the moment, but we do have our our coal coming in from hey, uh, from Granis. Um, but first I'd like to design Vulcanite Core Fragment Processing. How about research progress? Research progress is quite good. We've actually finished whatever it was we were researching. Um, I should probably do stack size now that I look at it. Uh, we could do module threes. It's probably about time. We've got condenser turbines. That's actually really cheap. I'm going to knock that out. A different recipe for lubricant. Since we're based on a cryonite planet, this actually makes probably a lot of sense. Uh, probably a ton of sense, actually. What's this? Methane ice? I've never bothered with that. Uh, iridium processing? Um, I, I won't jump to spending 800 on robot count just yet. Let's get beryllium out of the way. We don't need lab research speed. We're bottlenecked on resources um, for science. More explosive damage wouldn't be bad. Let's get... Uh, that's probably fine for now. We already did a couple of swarm safety, and then because it turns out the bot, the robot interference wind on Hagen is as high as it gets, um, literally. Uh, although in Hagen orbit, it's as low as it gets in orbit, which is nice. But yeah, the bot wind on this planet is actually shockingly bad. We can get better personal lasers. Let's do that. Um, okay, so we've got, well, let's leave that for now, remove the items on ground. This is a bit cramped over here, I'll probably move it a bit to the right. Actually, I think I can only move it one tile to the right before we have problems, so let's do that.
big container. Cool. And and what? Substations. We need some power for our train stops. Uh, we don't actually have any inserters in the middle, which makes things a little bit easier. Oh, that doesn't reach? That's kind of harsh. These inserters are exactly in the way. Um... Perhaps I will make a little exception here to what we usually do. Inserters. And we need one here anyway. And then... We actually need some up here as well. I could do this thing again. I guess that looks pretty consistent. I don't hate that. I don't like this little bit, but what can you do? It does cover any everything, and it is pretty neat. Yeah, it'll do. Alright, so... Filtered outputs are set correctly. Why... Oh, we just need to remove the beacons. And it'll do its thing. We need some power to see it working properly. And there it goes. We also need a substation way down here somewhere. I can't put it in the mi- I can put it in the middle. Let's do that. That looks pretty good on the map. And just in general. Alright, so we got crushed vulcanite over here, enriched over here stone over here, and vanilla core fragments over here, not to mention a whiff of pyroflux. Belt right side broken. Indeed it is. Good catch. Thank you. Alright, so there should be a slight surplus of Vulcanite itself, we should see that start to accumulate here after a after a bit, whatever the input limit is on this. There we go. It might take a little while because we're only 0.5 Vulcanite per second net on each column. Well, it seems to be working well enough in any case. Uh, input remains saturated for both the core fragment processes and the crushed vulcanite. Seems good. And all of the outputs are going where they're supposed to. Alright, so let's just set up the stations now uh, for LTN, and that'll be that. Uh, all of these should be... Well... I was going to say all of these should be active providers. As in, we set them as a very high priority pickup to keep them empty so that there's room for other things. But these two... I think... 
I think crushed Vulcanite. We're going to get way, 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 way more crushed Vulcanite than enriched. Um, but that said, I suppose theoretically, if we're getting enriched from anywhere else, uh, this could back up. It would take a long time. So yeah, I think we are doing active providers, uh, active pickup for all of these. Just like with the other core fragments, I suppose. Alright, so priority 100, provide stack threshold, stack threshold, what? Provide stack threshold 80, uh, no fluids except for this one, which is going to be set to 50k. The advanced chem plant from K2 is nuts. Is that so? Should I set it so that short trains can pick these things up? Probably. I see no harm in it. Except that we lose some storage space. But we're going to be trying to keep this empty anyway. Alright. Oops. Just the one close to the station is the one we want to limit. And then... Push to the front. Uh, and then and then? Wasn't there a problem where I realized I had to add a little bit of circuit logic? Oh, I know exactly where to look to confirm that. It was stacked over here. So we said, if there's no train, don't put stuff from here into here. Because otherwise... You yeah, know, if, if there is a train, don't move this stuff. Because we don't want this moving from here to here while the train is being loaded. Alright, that makes sense. Uh, in that case... Let's see. I need to detect a train. Uh, if T equals zero... And that's just going to have to piggyback across that container. And we're going to set it to uh, read stopped train T, and that's it. Copy the settings to all the train stops. And last but not least, we need to name them. Well, we technically don't need to name them, but it's definitely a good idea. Or fragment, pick up, stone, pick up, uh, enriched vulcanite, pick up, and crushed vulcanite, pick up. Allow short trains in CC? What do you mean by CC? CC. Alright, I think that is basically it. Core fragment requester. And I'm just going to put a pulverizer... Let me double check my naming convention for the other core fragments. I just said core fragment drop off. Oh, this one actually says processing to... We're just labeling it by the primary output. I guess that's fine. 
Uh, and as for regular core fragments, there's too much stuff to list. And there's no, like, primary output, really. Alright, so I guess I'll say Crushed Vulcanite. Or both of the Vulcanites as being what we're really looking for here. Whoops. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. Big brain time. I hope so. Guitars. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so I think that's it. Look at that. One pyroflux. Wait, really? 3.9 pyroflux in the entire system so far. Wow. That doesn't sound right. Each recipe here is supposed to give us four. Oh, is this not connected? Oh, that doesn't line up. Oh, okay, because I moved that. All right. Yeah, I was going to say, I'm kind of glad I looked at that. Okay, more than kind of glad. Um, I think instead of steel pipes, we'll just connect that like so. So that this build doesn't just barely need one more type of thing uh, to work. Okay, uh, so the whole time this has been running, we've got 1.8k Pyroflux. Not much better than processing vanilla core fragments, honestly. In fact, it's about the same. For some reason, I thought we'd get more Pyroflux out of Vulcanite core fragments. Maybe we do indirectly, but uh, even, even considering that, I kind of thought... I thought the core fragments themselves would spit out more fluid. We can melt vulcanite blocks into pyroflux. We also need sand. I guess that might be a really efficient way to transport it. Wait, really? Hold on. Oh, hold on a minute. All there's only four recipes that make pyroflux. Two kinds of core fragment processing, melting vulcanite blocks, and barrels. And I, I think we need pyro... Uh, it's crushed vulcanite and enriched vulcanite to make vulcanite blocks. Okay. So yeah, unless we're willing to turn the stone into sand and make vulcanite blocks and then melt them. Uh, there's actually nothing that kind of directly gives us uh, significant amounts of pyroflux. I'm a little bit surprised by that, but I guess we'll just have to have uh, a facility somewhere that melts vulcanite blocks into pyroflux. Or it might be more efficient to just transport it as Vulcanite blocks and sand. Let's see. Uh, stack size... Both of these are 200, actually. So 2% of a stack becomes 20 Pyroflux. Um, uh, let's see, 50... 50 times 40 times 2... We can do 4,000 times 20, 80,000. It is more efficient in the trains uh, by like 20%-ish to move it as fluid. Uh, but obviously, until you have spaceships, moving fluids across planets is a little bit of a pain. Okay, cool. Another pyroflux pipe missing. Oh, yeah. It takes a while to notice because the output is so slow. Good catch, thank you. Zorok, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. 
good to see you again. Alright, so let's uh, blueprint this thing up. How many is this going to process? 20 core fragments per second, that's already more than we're getting. Um, I think I would like to just double this if it comes to that. Um, well, when it comes to that. And r rather than taking this stuff and processing it here, uh, for the reasons we went over before, I'll do that in through the rail network. Stack sizes aren't too bad anyway. Or fragment. Processing. Uh, snap to grid 86, 24. Get rid of the cheat items. And I have a sinking feeling I didn't put wire up here. Need to start over for making the blueprint. I did name this though. I didn't set a request. Uh, so we can fit... Uh, 40 times 2 times 8 plus 40, 680 stacks. Uh, so 13,600. I'm going to request 13k. Actually, let's make it 12k. Leave a bit of slack in there. And that'll be that. Cool. Okay. One of the things I like about having this system that lets a short train pick this up is we can really easily see with alt mode that there's definitely less than... Uh, short train here. Worth of stuff. If we see both of these icons, we know it's at least approaching between one and two cargo wagons. Wow, that's actually filling up pretty quickly. Alright, let's make our blueprint. Snap to grid, 86, 24. Train stop names. Remove the cheat items. And... That's it. Vulcanite core fragment processing. And now we just have to decide where to put it. Uh, why don't we put... Our core fragment processing out of the way somewhere. Alright, I want it nice and close to... Well, I was going to say I want it nice and close to our core fragment pickup. But I think I want to move that anyway. Because the next thing I should design, before we even build that, is a block for... You know what, I'm not going to delete that until I've like placed it in the other game, just to be sure. In the other surface. We've actually accumulated quite a bit of stuff in our editor place. Alright. Um, let's see. We need a block for receiving a cargo rocket. And I think what I'd like to do here is... I don't think it'll be perfect, but if we have a few cargo rocket... Uh, cargo landing pads in the middle... Is this the middle? Oh, I can't design like this. How... It, the only thing I need to 
put into this blueprint is the cargo landing pad. So let me just measure that. I think it's 11 or oh, 9. 9 by 9. Yeah. So we're going to just represent this with some chests. Alright, I think... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And... Like so. That should be the middle. Fantastic. Okay, so we are going to need some robopots, some pickup stations, some drop-off bots and repair pack, just so that we don't have to manually seed this every time. Well, that's one reason anyway. Uh, and a vanilla pickup station to take away all of the cargo rocket sections and stuff. Um, I would like to do a recurring pattern here. I think we'll do a little corner. Nice and close to one of the cargo landing pads. And ideally, I don't suppose... Oh, I just realized I could do this 3x3 three three to represent a cargo landing pad. That might be a little easier. Uh, this is fine, actually. But maybe in future. But yeah, I want... Oh, that fits perfectly. Oh, I love this. Okay. So we're going to have the desired product output like this. And if we really want to, we could do up to five belts. Although, if we were going to do that, we would have the belts go straight into these through a splitter um, or something. Uh, maybe not through a splitter, but like, we are bottlenecking this on the inserter speed. For the invisible inserters here, but most of the time that's going to be fine. Especially for resources that we're receiving by cargo rocket. Um, so that's a really, really nice fit. Let's do it uh, over here, over here, and over here. Don't mind how that looks. It's kind of like some weird reverse swell thingy. Uh, and on top of that, we're going to need just one station for... Well, actually, we're going to need two stations. One for dropping off robots. Which I think we'll try to line up like so. Um, can we put this... Make that symmetrical if we can. Maybe. Or I wonder if it'd reach up here actually. That's even better. Easy to lay out as well. So that should have maybe at the corners enough coverage if the rocket crashes. Let me look back at Granis. We had a crash there already. Like the first rocket or the second rocket we sent. We're having power problems. Oh no. 
Alright, we'll get to that in a second. Evil hack? Uh, evil hacks? Evil pla? Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Tharphone? Welcome, welcome also. Good to see you again. Good morning to you too. Uh, I think the, the rocket was aimed here. And it crashed down here. So... This is by no means as far away as it can crash. But like... I guess one length of... One length of our rail blocks might be about the limit. This might actually cover it all. We'll see. Um, and if we build these things close together, they're going to have overlapping uh, shared bot networks. All right. So... I think we'll do the input on the north and the output on the south. I might just use logistic bots to take away the cargo rocket sections and... Yeah, cargo rocket sections. Why does that not line up the same? Oh, I see. Cargo rocket sections and capsules are going to come out through here. How are we doing? Not too bad. Not too bad at all, thanks. We just need two chests, actually. Um, I think we'll do them like this so that they have the same distance to go to the output. Hello, hello. Uh, Ragenfeld, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How are we doing? Pretty well, thanks. Dilka, welcome, welcome. Also, Sheep Say Meh, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So this is going to be whitelist. Well, you know what? I could just blacklist whatever is going here, then we can see in alt mode what's, which is supposed to be which. Damsel, thank you very much for the raid. How's the rest of your stream? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. Ragnarok, this vegan. Welcome, welcome. Also, shout out, damsel. There we go. Miklat, good to see you again. Hello, kiddo. <laughs> Oh, I see how it is. Hello, Mum. Vlad the Imploded. Good to see you again. Uh, Alright, so we were going to do a LTN drop-off here, which was for short train. Uh, which side do I want to put it? Probably here. Keep it short. Uh, and we just want, let's see, what do we want? Rest of the stream was great. Found out I was launching rockets with a full buffer. Super neat. With a full buffer. Do you mean you were, like, wasting resources because something was full? Or, like, your input was saturated and that's good? Koha, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Uh, let's see, we want a, probably a buffer chest, just in case. This is going to be robots. And... Uh, repair packs. Repair packs go in here, so that's fine. No, I was wasting... Uh, it was something I just built today, so it wasn't that bad. Okay, cool. Do RoboPorts tell us how many repair packs are in them? I think they do. Whoops. Uh, repair 
care pack. Green wire. Okay, I see repair packs included in logistic network contents. So we could probably go... Uh, set filters blacklist. I don't want there to be anything in the logistic network here except for... Uh, robot and repair packs and everything else goes to the trash well no that's not quite right um everything that isn't our intended outputs so i could do storage whoa 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 whoa, whoa. what's that what's this nope nope um, I guess I could do... Hmm. I wanted to set it up so bulk rail loaders would pick up the filtered item automatically, but then... I would have to rebalance it. No, this is fine. Uh, let's just do storage chest. Uh, stack inserter. So this is going to have a filter. This is going to have a filter... I'll set it to fish, just so we have a demonstration. Uh, where's the fishy? Fish. Alright, so if a rocket crashes... If a rocket doesn't crash, our cargo rocket silo is going to output fish into here. If it does crash, construction bots are going to pick things up and... Fish are going to be put in this chest only. And nothing else is allowed to be put in this chest. And there's only going to be one storage chest uh, that doesn't have a filter, and that's going to be for getting rid of everything else. And I think we actually don't need any... We don't need any special, like, set requests on a requester chest if we do it this way. Alright, cool. Now then. Uh, so we're going to be requesting... from short trains. Uh, probably a really small request threshold. Actually, I'll just do a stack threshold of one. If we if we run out of something entirely, we'll request it. I don't care if there's going to be a, a little gap in having something here. Is that a mod for designing? Yep, it's called editor extensions. Uh, the reason I've got these chests like this is... We've act there's actually a mode with this mod that lets us have a separate surface during our game. Um, it's under mod settings per player, and it's called testing lab. Uh, so this, uh, this, this lets us press the editor shortcut to just jump straight over here so that we can edit things with uh, cheats and everything um, and test it very easily. Um, the only downside is in space exploration, we can't build stuff like cargo rocket silos, um, spaceships, things that uh, things that work with multiple surfaces. Probably because you could easily send these things to your main game, even if you didn't mean to. <laughs> um, I imagine that's the reason. What are these trains doing? Oh, we've actually got too many trains for the depots now. Unless they're all in motion. We've got like... One, two, three. Three too many trains. Maybe four. Okay. So what were we doing? Oh yeah, last thing before we set up our... Uh, 
Vulcanite core fragment processing. I want a proper a proper block for receiving cargo rockets that's going to deal with the crashes. Um, so here we're going to have repair. And I think we're just going to read from logistic network. Let's see. The only other things that are going to be in the logistic network, they're not going to be there for, for long, I hope. I could put a uh, I could put a constant combinator here to ignore all of the things that aren't going to be in this chest. So we're going to set filters blacklist. Stack size one. Wait, why can't I overwrite? Oh, here it is. I accidentally clicked that. Uh, stack size one. Set filters blacklist. We're going to read. Logistic network contents, and uh, actually, no, I don't need to do any management of putting repair packs in, because it'll just fill up, and that's fine. Alright, so we don't need to read from the logistic network at all. Um, repair packs and bots go here. Read robot statistics, total logistic bots, total construction bots. Um, hmm. I really hate how there's only three stacks available at each RoboPort now, because I would like to add more construction bots in case there's a crash. We could just go a hundred, I guess. If I, if I set it to something like read available construction bots and keep going until we have at least one available. It'll eventually overfill and there'll be problems. Um, so I think... I think we'll just go for like... We'll just go for a hundred construction bots, maybe. Is it going to put in logistic bots first or construction? I think it's logistic. Let's see. If we have a chest with both types of bots, we can't count on the trains bringing both types of bots at the same time, though. Uh, but I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure it'll put uh, only one type of bot in indefinitely if we just don't filter this it's construction bots interesting considering they have a higher uh item id we definitely can't count on item id to control this and it is consistently doing construction bots first okay i guess i could just Oh, we have bigger chests. Hmm. I don't love having to use two inserters for this, but I think it's probably wise. Uh, on second thought, we're going to run into the same problem if I try to put more than three stacks of bots in here. So I guess the entire robot network... Can I set it up to prioritize putting logistic bots in without too many combinators? Probably one decider combinator, actually. We're just going to say... If construction... Uh, if Logibot... Uh, less than 50. Output construction bot. And that's going to go to the blacklist. And then... We could have the system allowed to add as many construction bots as it likes. I think that'll probably be fine. 
get some power just so it stops flashing. Probably depend on the order of the bots in the chest taking from one end of the chest first. Uh, yeah. So what I'm going to do here is we're reading from the total logistic bots and available construction bots uh, directly from uh, the... Hold on. I was going to use a negative over here to check... Oh, that works. That works. Okay, if... If there are available construction bots, don't put any construction bots in. Um, if logistic bot if logistic bots are less than fifty, don't put construction bots in. And put logistic bots in until we get a positive signal on logistic bots. And that's. Don't put a green wire there, because it'll talk to this. Uh, put... So when we put the first logistic bot in, it's going to get a blacklist signal. Uh, this will... This negative will allow us to put an additional 49 logistic bots in using a set filters blacklist. So that'll put in 50 logistic bots and... Not until we get 50 logistic bots will we add construction bots. Um, so this is going to output construction bot if there aren't 50 logistic bots. This is going to output construction bot if any construction bots are available. Uh, let's test it. Let's test it. We're going to put in... Bots and bots. First I'm going to put construction bots in this chest. Oh. Oh, that's interesting. Logistic bot less than 50... Oh, I didn't connect this wire yet. That's why. So we weren't actually sending the construction bot signal. Uh, let's see. So we've now got zero bots in the network. There's a logistic bot somewhere. Where's our... Oh, there's a super logistic bot in here. Sneaky. Okay, so zero bots in the network. We're not trying to put construction bots in. In the moment I put logi bots in here, it's going to load them one at a time so that we don't have to worry about over-inserting. logistic bots first, just so that we don't end up with no logistic bots in the system, because there's only three stacks in the one roboport. And then, once we've got 50 logistic bots, we start putting construction bots in, uh, and only if... Uh, only uh, whenever there's at least one construction bot available, um, as in not in flight, uh, we will not be putting any more construction bots in. Fantastic. So that should scale indefinitely. Uh, if we put a bunch of these together, I mean... Actually, I just realized that while clever, that whole thing may have been pointless. I might be able to set this up so we never need any logistic bots. Because... We're only going to be moving stuff around when, uh, when a rocket crashes. And we can control where those things go by having very specific filters on storage chests. And I could make... I could make this a storage chest or a buffer chest. I guess it doesn't really matter. Actually, okay. New question. 
construction bot. Uh, buffer chest, storage chest, filter on the storage chest, uh, let's say filter on the buffer chest of asking for wood, actually make it ask for rail, and if we put some rail here, deconstruct it, oh, that's, turn off editor mode, shall we? Wait, how can I... Uh, where do I change the settings so that I don't instantly delete things when I mark them for deconstruction? Hmm. Uh, I've got a better idea. That might be good to know later on, but... Wait, no, I still... I'm going to delete this if I mark it for deconstruction. Uh, hmm. Settings? Oh, here we go. Instant deconstruction. That's probably what I want to turn off for the moment. Okay. Good to know. And I'm guessing if that was a buffer chest with no filters the bot wouldn't know what to do with it. Okay. Okay, that's very helpful. Uh, we're not going to need any logistic bots. That simplifies things a lot. Although, I was pretty happy with this little design. Um, let's just blueprint it. Uh, Logi... Bots first. Throw that in the circuits. Okay. So we're going to have a buffer here for repair packs and construction bots. I should have checked. Um, I can check it right now, actually. Instant deconstruction off. If I put down... More than 50... Okay, so they'll only... They'll slightly overfill it because of stack sizes. Uh, cargo... Bot cargo sizes. But... Um, they won't... They won't go beyond the request number. So I should probably just set the requests very, very high. Um, probably the maximum that can fit in a chest, to be honest. Um, Alright, so our train is going to deliver to here. Is it ever going to deliver something other than construction bots or repair packs? I don't think so. So we'll just have a stack inserter for that. Actually, I could make it a bulk rail unloader. And then... Like that. That gives us a little bit more range with symmetry in case there's a rocket crash. Um, we'll just do an unconditional, uh, Alexiana, thank you for the follow, welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Actually, in order to avoid overfilling, um, I think I will filter blacklist, stack size one, available construction bots. It's probably fine. But we'll put repair packs in unconditionally. Alright, so construction bots, repair packs, if they somehow get put on the ground or something. 
Although, I did just realize... If for some reason we're sending a cargo rocket with construction bots in it... We're not going to do that. It's fine. I could just put this down to 50 if that was the case. I think that would probably be fine. Alright, so... This goes here, I think. Actually, it should go over here. It'll make the train signaling a bit more responsive. So that's how we're going to supply our bots. We're just going to go request tech threshold one, robots, and just one stack, I think. We don't, we don't need to supply these with any great throughput at all. Uh, and repair pack. We'll probably ask for a few repair packs. Me as well. And then down this end. Uh, I'll just copy this from here, actually. Whoops. Uh, down this end, we need... What does this line up? I want to make sure I do this symmetrically. Why don't I just copy this first? This will be a pickup. We've got a vanilla train station called Return to Mall that detects if there's anything in here. Uh, sets train limit to 1 because enable disable causes problems unless you have only like one train trying to come here. Um, and we're just going to have a storage chest. So this storage chest right here is going to have no filter. Actually, hmm. Yeah, we'll process the scrap somewhere else. Do that in the mall or something. When the rockets crash. So all of the other storage chests are going to be filtered for uh, whatever we're looking for from the cargo rocket. And this is going to be the only storage chest that doesn't have a filter. So everything else is going to be dumped here and go back to the mall. Seems good. Uh, now let's get some substations, I guess. Right about... that doesn't fit. Fantastic. I'd like to have a nice, neat layout, if at all possible. Can we cover all of this? Not quite. Let's remove our cheat power so we can see. What if we go max distance there? And then, next distance there. That doesn't work so well at all, actually. This is just not going to line up very nicely with uh, substation pylons, I think. Oh, not substation pylons, regular substations. How about we just do it... that doesn't quite work. Like... this? I don't love that. That's not a very straight line, is it? That should go one to the left. Alright, that's actually perfect. 
And can we do it? We can. So then over here. Is that right? I think so. Oh, I think I messed it up. Oh, I definitely messed something up there. Okay, that looks good. I love it. I love this. Nice, kind of like diamond shape. Well, it depends on which pattern we're looking at, but that looks quite good. Probably depends on the order of the bots in the chest taking from the end of the chest first. The end of the chest. I'm not sure if I... No, we're one short on powering this thing. Oh, the tragedy. Oh, that hurts. Hmm... That's not quite right. How about you, I guess? I, I can live with that. What was that? electric rail this thing it is called a bulk rail unloader um the mod is called bulk rail loader and it pretty much does what it says uh it grabs absolutely everything and takes it out of or puts it into a cargo wagon that was from when you tested the insertion of bots from chess okay yeah all right so i think I think we're just about done here. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that we're not gonna want to trash whatever comes out of this, as a rule. I could be wrong, but I'd rather default it to not trashing if we're not paying attention. And I think that's basically it. Alright, we can't really test this without going to a different save or just building the thing. So let's do that. We're going to set filters on this to blacklist of whatever resource is supposed to come in from the cargo rocket. So it'll output uh, space capsules and cargo rocket sections. Those will come down here and get recycled. This is an interplanetary resource depot. Yes, these things right here uh, represent... Um, cargo landing pads. Whoops. Uh, I just can't place them in this editor extension space. And come to think of it, it's probably not just because you might cheat whether you want to or not um, that they don't let you build these things. Uh, it's also you might just place a cargo landing pad and immediately receive a rocket shipment from one of your outposts that you didn't mean to send to the Shadow Realm. So there's that. Okay, um, this needs a signal here. Uh, and I think we might just about be done. That would be funny, though. It would. You would have to have a cargo rocket set up to deliver to, like, any surface um, with the same name. 
and then to really get it done by accident. Wait. Doesn't it give it, like, the name of the surface and then landing pad as a default? Hagen landing pad. Yeah, it would be pretty hard to do that by accident, I guess. Unless you, like, copy-pasted this over here. If I, if I did that and we had a rocket that was programmed to send to any landing pad with name, uh, we'd probably lose a rocket. Got allow lists on the unloaders? Uh, yeah. We're setting those to whitelist of whatever resource is supposed to come through um, the cargo rocket. Alright, cool. Let's blueprint that. Snap to grid 8624. Train stop names. Did I do the train stop names? I think I did. Default ones at least. I might just um, change that to landing pad. The default name. That seems good. Uh, this one's correct, and this one we're gonna call robot and repair pack requester for the purpose of cargo landing pads. Okay, I think that's it. So let's make a blueprint of this, and then we'll actually build it uh, on Hagen, and then we'll blueprint it properly. Oh, wait. I've got to get, get that snap to, otherwise I would just copy-paste. Okay. Um, put that down there for now, and I'd like to have Vulcanite Core Fragment fairly close to the regular Core Fragment processing. Um, in fact, it would be a little bit of a pain to move this, but maybe I'd like to put it right here. There's not that much to move, actually. At all, really. Just need a little bit of landfill here. Alright. How about... There's a couple of full chests of copper plate. Oh yeah, I forgot our power is still broken. Uh, let's have a look at our uranium and... Oh. Oh crap. It's not that we ran out of storage space. It's that we don't have any more... 235. Uh, we can fix that, but this really is the last time um, until I get Coverex going. Unless I hit up another uranium mine, which is not the worst idea. But I'd like to focus on getting Coverex first. Now then. So let's tentatively say our, our Vulcanite core fragment processing is going to go here. Oh, I can actually get the bots to remove all of this. That's handy. All right, so we'll place this here. That's gonna be that one. And we definitely want our cargo rocket 
That's a tiny amount of uranium. Uh, we definitely want our cargo rockets to land close to this. Maybe even right here? But there's still water in the way. Where's our landfill? Landfill... Serious? There's... There's no landfill on this planet. Huh. That's a bit surprising. Uh, I guess it's not that surprising. Sushi Pizza? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Nice name. I've been using editor extensions, but I've been using a separate save every time as my lab. Yeah, that's what I was doing until... Well, until this playthrough, actually. Uh, yeah, it's settings, mod settings, per player, and testing lab. And you might want to turn this off as well if you don't want to cheat. But it'll tell you that if you just mouse over this. All right, mouse over the testing lab option. Um, um uh, I think I I think I will just put the Vulcanite core fragment processing down here somewhere. Right next to the drop off. I'm just looking for a couple of blocks of space that are not gonna be blocked by a mine that I wanna Empty out. Let's see. How about just these two? Why not? That should be okay. Alright, let's go with these two. And we'll go... Uh, our new blueprint, first and foremost. That looks kind of cool. I like it. Uh, and then we're going to remove these and put in some uh, cargo landing pads. And I want to actually go build these before I make the blueprint. Oh, that's a little bit of a problem. Not a whole lot of a problem, actually. Um, I want to actually build those uh, cargo landing pads before I make the blueprint, because I want to give them some kind of uh, not default name so that nothing ends up getting sent to them until we manually change the name. Okay, so... Cargo... Landing pad. We have a few over here. Um, that's one. One, two, three, four. Fantastic. Need mall storage? Four bots in your mall? Uh oh. Let's have a look. Yeah, I see. Alright, let's add even more storage then. Oh, don't tell me. Oh, I remember this. There's no bots available to place the storage chests. Yeah. Alright, let's name this... Uh, definitely... Definitely not uh, used... Landing pad. Fantastic. And now we can blueprint. Alright, cool. Uh, cargo. Landing pad. Pull by cargo. Landing and with bot cleanup. Thanks for all the fish. A missed opportunity. Alright, that should probably do it. Actually, let me just put four cargo landing pads 
as the symbol for this. Oh, uh, snap to grid 86, 24. Train stop names, yes. Fantastic. All right, and let's drop that in uh, somewhere. And then we'll put our Vulcanite Core Fragment... Where? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, Vulcanite Core Fragment Processing is going to go right here. And let's get to it. Um, I'm not going to bother to check what resources our construction train has available. I'm just going to send it over. But not before I uncancel those ones. Okay. Wait for inactivity. And let's build what we can. So the reason anything is working at all is because we have all these uh, wind turbines at the moment. Three, 35 megawatts. Uh, I would have thought we'd get some... Oh. Yeah, our first bit of uranium fuel cell is struggling. Actually, we probably made a few and I need to manually trigger getting these to pick them up simultaneously. Uh, I'll give it a minute. There's our construction train doing its thing. Uh, let me go ahead and set that to not get used. I'll set this as a high priority um, because we don't want to use this drop-off anymore. And we'll do the same thing with our coal drop-off. Oh. Uh, I think we missed placing something here. I'll get back to that. Priority. Greater than zero. Fantastic. Still researching. That's good. I think we've built everything we can just about for what's in my personal inventory. Let's go grab some more stuff. We need, uh, I think, 12 pulverizers. We can make condenser turbines now. Pulverizer. We don't have any pulverizers? Oh, it's worse than I thought. Unless I never actually requested those. I think I probably never actually requested those. Nope. Yeah, I never asked for pulverizers. Um, I should probably add a request for those at our low priority spot. And what's the stack size? Five. Let's say... 25. 25 of these. But for now I'm just going to handcraft some. They're actually surprisingly easy to handcraft. Especially considering how much trouble it is to make inserters. How many do we need for this build? Uh, Twelve. Right, so six again. Fantastic. And I'll take some rail. 
There it is. That sink. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we're still handcrafting this. Alright, let's see what else we can drop off over here. And what's this? Oh, good, good, good. I thought that was supposed to be bots at first. Oh, the, uh... The invisible inserters for the bulk rail unloaders are being super slow as well. And... We just got faster? Question mark? It is connected to the main power. We've only got two fuel cells here so far. I want four before I switch it back on. We can definitely manage that. Sushi Pizza, thank you for the follow. Alright, down we go over here. And... I think we've actually built this whole thing just about. Oops. I'll just handcraft these two since that... That'll be a little bit easier, I think. Wow, the pulverizers are kind of slow, though. 30 seconds each. That'll get this block at least a little bit functional, though. And we got a bit of rail down here. Alright, so next we want to set up well, first I want to confirm that our bots will get delivered here. I forgot to connect the... the wire here. Oh, I also forgot to set that as, an, as a negative. Uh, so double error avoids infinite deliveries. That's good. Let's just confirm that LTN is going to deliver this stuff. Fantastic. And I do want to see it um, placed into the robot network and confirm uh, that that works properly. We've got still only two fuel cells. Wow, that is slow. How much power does it want? 129 kilowatts. We can we can help it with that. I'll just go over there and put it in its own little power network with a few wind turbines. We didn't actually have that many repair packs apparently. Oh, we do. The insert is just really slow. Ouchie. What's our stack size up to? Six. Alright, I'm just gonna send you on ahead. Do you need some Logibots for the active providers? Yes. Yes, I do. Uh, is there a way around that? Because I'd really like to just need construction bots for this. Hmm. Hmm. No path? Oh, there's a couple of signals missing up here. One, two, three, to be precise. There we go. Um, 
there's two options. I can belt all of the items that don't belong in the cargo landing pads down here. Or I can bring Logibots. I think I'd rather belt. So we're just going to do... I can't do a blacklist uh, with the with the loaders, so we'll just do it like this. It's actually not that obtrusive. Put that about here. And... Hmm, there's no way that's going to be symmetrical if I do this. How about... This will be fine. I'll have to move that over a little bit. Oh, or I could put this over here. Uh, the bots will have to move slightly further. Apparently I didn't have enough storage chests. Um, the, the bots will have to move slightly further when there's a crash, but I don't think I care about that. Unless the crash happens down here. Alright, so that will work completely with just construction bots. Cool. Um, should probably... Uh, I was going to say I should update the blueprint, but now we've got this in the way. I could just do a blueprint that fits inside an existing block. Uh, then... No, I've got a better idea. We are going to turn off our RoboPort, just in case. Make a block down here. Copy-paste this. And then... Update our blueprint. I'm gonna have to start from scratch. Alright, so cargo landing pad. Snap to grid 8624. And uh cargo landing pads plus Bots. Okay. Oh, this... You know what? This is an opportunity. Thanks for all the fish. Okay. Blueprint. 8624, train stop names, cargo landing pad, uh, landing pads plus bots, evil plus says yay, uh, cargo landing pads plus Bot clean up in event of crash. Uses construction bots only with logistic test filters to to put items back. Okay. Uh, that's going to go here. 
gonna delete that. And I think we're good now. Cool. So let's get our main resources. Uh, I'm just looking at the path that the trains will have to take. And I'm thinking for Vulcanite core fragments, either this one or this one would be effectively closest. Probably this one on the left. Uh, so this is... I actually need to copy the name from over here now. Destination position general vicinity. Launch on cargo full. I think it disabled itself, thankfully. Um, Alright. And same goes for the call. Alright, so we're going to call this something like... Uh, well, can I see if... That's going to be Vulcanite Core Fragments. That's going to be Vulcanite Core Fragments. That's going to be Blacklist Vulcanite Core Fragments. One, two, and three. I like how all the filters are right next to each other to set this correctly. And this is going to be Vulcanite Core Fragment Landing Pad. And that's it. Now we just need... I should really set a shortcut for this. Let's make it number two for now. Rennes. Oh, that's fine. Okay. Uh, destination position Vulcanite CF. That must be exactly what I named it before. Launch on cargo full and go. Now then, we want coal over here. Coal. And let's have a look. Coal. Perfect. Launch on cargo full. It is aimed at Hagen. Yes, good. Fantastic. There's our Vulcanite core fragments. There's our cargo rocket sections being thrown back towards the mall. And there's our vanilla train. Uh, actually still waiting to be emptied. Because we're so short on power. I just remembered that power is needed for media defenses as well. That's kind of scary. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four. Cool. Let's uh, turn our power back on. As soon as they pick that up, I can switch this off. Zero of one media is destroyed? Uh-oh. Why, why was that inserter slower? That's weird. That's very weird. As is light. That one missed. That one is in orbit and missed. That one missed. That one is in orbit and missed. Okay, cool. Hole filters? Uh, yes. Good point. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh... These two are less urgent. Alright, so I gotta get the coal out of here. Coal goes in here. Construction train just got reloaded. Probably because power is back. And I want to name this station Coal Landing Pad. 
Fantastic. And here's our first... Well, not our first. Yeah, our first from this cargo landing pad. Pick up for Vulcanite Core Fragments. Beautiful. And we get more stone. Not a whole lot, but I won't complain. We also get a few more vanilla core fragments. Could build a temp coal power station until nuclear is sorted? That might not be the worst idea. Oh yeah, cover X. Um, well, we need production science packs first. We've taken our first step. Well, not our first step, but we've taken a significant step towards that over here. Um, production science packs need vulcanite blocks and iron ingots. And uranium-238. Okay. Um, I'd like to do a rail block that receives all sorts of things and sends all sorts of... Oh, I already did this. It's right here. Um, we just have to... We just have to add more storage and have more different types of stuff um, that can get shoved into one cargo rocket. And that's how we're going to supply all of our solids for our science in orbit for now. Um, but first I should probably go into orbit and actually build out... quite a bit of stuff, actually. We need plasma stream... and prod one... And more machine learning data. No, oh, that's not that bad actually. To do the the absolute bare minimum, to tack this onto here. Um, what have we run out of? Copper. Okay. How long can we go with our existing fuel cells? I wonder. I can't actually see how much we've got. But, judging by the fact that these only have one each, uh, it's not a whole lot. And our temperature's already getting low enough. It won't be long before we have to put more fuel in. How much fuel are we consuming? Uh, how much power are we consuming? Uh, 300 megawatts at least? Hmm. Hmm. I don't want to have to build these things. Uh, I would have to build like 150 of them. Yeah, we're definitely not doing that. Um, I could do some regular old steam engines. We need steam engines to make steam turbines anyway. Uh, the efficiency is significantly higher if we take that extra step. I could do more... Oh, another delivery. Beautiful. I could do more... Um, more power like this, actually. What did we figure out? Uh, 4.5 megawatts. Oh, yeah, I think I remember vaguely. Um, we get, like, net 75, or was it net 60? We get about net 60 megawatts from this, if that. The electric boiler doesn't run that much. We get at least 55 megawatts. I think most of our power is coming from... Okay, why is there only 36 megawatts coming from the... Because we're using nuclear up, that's why. 
It's actually prioritizing consuming the nuclear fuel, even though this should be able to keep up. Hmm. That's not great. Uh, our current power needs are like 300 megawatts. We need like five of these. We've got four already. I think until we get Coverex done, I should just do a couple more of these. Alright. Let's put it over here. And... I might just... Uh, it's going to be a little tricky to just copy-paste it, I think. Alright, how, how many do we need of these greenhouses? 21, one atmospheric condenser, 14, 14 uh, fuel refineries. Oh, I can make 14 of those right now. How many wind turbines do you have in storage? Probably not that many. Oh, there might be a chest full of them. Or we had a chest full of them. Uh, 2.3 thousand? Okay. Okay, that might help a little bit. That, that, that might help a wee tad. Um, let's make some room in my inventory. I'm not actually using this cargo landing pad. I don't think. Considering that there's no inserters attached to it, I'm pretty sure we're not using it. Um, let's just make some room in here. In the old inventory. And we'll take all the wind turbines we can carry. That's definitely going to have at least a little bit of an impact on our power issues. Whoop. Alright, let's uh, refresh that. There's actually some in here, ironically enough. Way down here, there's another 50, there's some in the cargo wagon, and there's some over here. If you plan a deconstruction, can't you see the number of fuel cells in the underground? I, that's probably a good point. Let's have a look. Um, nope. No, we can't. Hmm, I'm a little disappointed by that. Good try, though. Alright, uh, we're gonna need some substations. We're gonna need some rocket fuel. What's the best layout for this? Um, so it's like spamming solar panels, but without accumulators. I think it's just going to be a square. Just don't know how many we're going to have before it repeats. Yeah, that was easy to figure out. Well, much much easier to figure out um, directly. Look, this is six, and this is seven, right? So it actually. How do I do the snap to grid for this? Oh, I know. The, um... 
The snap two should be the same shape as this. Snap to grid is 20 by 20. And it doesn't really matter with the offsets. But... It looks like it is in the middle already, actually. Alright, snap to grid relative. That didn't quite work out. Oh, are these... I guess these aren't, like, 20 apart, right? Yeah, they're overlapping. 18. I think it's 18. That's more what I was expecting to see. Alright, perfect. And then... Let's drop that. Okay. Where should we spam at? How many do we have? Um, actually, let's get a precise count. 2.3k. And our blueprint is... 48. So we need 40... Oh, we, on... we actually only need 48 of these? So a bit less than 7x7. Seven seven. Where can we fit 7x7? Seven seven for this pattern? I think I'll put it over here, near all of the other, like, temporary power stuff. Um, a bit further out in case we want to double, in case we want to do this and double it. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's about where I want to put it for now. Uh, and I know we have enough lighted substations for this. Don't forget bots. Good call, thank you. 2.3k should help? Yeah, probably it'll help a little bit. How many do we have right now? 1.3k, so we're more than... Uh, we're almost doubling what we get from wind turbines with this. That'll definitely take the edge off a little bit. I, I think I will make another... I mean, I already handcrafted these. Um, I, I think I will make another couple of greenhouse uh, power plants, though. If nothing else, it'll mitigate the cost of uh, spending uranium for power a little bit later. But I do like the power sources that are completely infinite, which uranium will be later on, but not right now it's not. It's way too slow for that. I should probably calm down until my bots finish placing in an area. Skip the charging. I didn't bring big power poles. Mistakes were made. Kind of hypnotic. Yeah, all of these wind turbines placed as close together as possible definitely wouldn't drop each other's efficiency or anything like that. I definitely like this design better than what they use in real life.
It's actually so many wind turbines, it's taking a little while to place them. Might want to stop stone mining in the old mall. Because it's sending train loads to the new mall. Stone mining in the old mall. Oh, yes, indeed. Um, okay. We can do that. Good call. Vivian, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Do they use UPS, those wind turbines? No more than a solar panel, or maybe less, I imagine. Never got much into them, but could be a better solution than solar on a low solar planet. Yeah, that's why we have them here. Um, it's just a constant 20 kilojoules, uh, kilowatts for each of them. For some reason, they have an energy capacity as well. Um, solar panels don't have that, do they? No, they don't. I would have thought the way they programmed the wind turbines was as, like, fake solar panels. But, I mean, I guess we can try to find out. We're not going to find out through this screen how much the wind turbines are costing us, right? I'd have to go more granular than that. I'm not sure which... Uh... Oh, I've actually run out of... I thought I had enough. Oh, I did say it was like... I must have miscalculated, actually. I didn't know how many wind turbines I had. Uh, we actually do need more substations as well. This design exists in real life too, but it's not so good. Yeah, uh, what, are the, what are the advantages and disadvantages of that? I'm actually quite curious. I mean, obvi obvious advantage is... Maybe it doesn't murder birds as much. Um, you're going to end up with some really heavy stuff rotating. Well, that's going to be true either way. It's going to be rotating in a place that's less, um, less inclined to wear and tear, I imagine. Let's grab our poles. I also need... Substation pylons. I mean, I keep calling them pylons. I need plain old boring substations. Give me those. I think under the hood there are accumulators. Yeah, I kind of... That's That was my next guess since I saw the charge. These are good in smaller low-power areas where... The traditional design doesn't work. Okay. We've all seen those little tiny ones on top of, like, caravans and stuff, right? A little bit like that, I guess. Onshore turbines are generally only half as productive as offshore. Definitely. And have higher CO2 footprint. That's unfortunate. Okay, uh, we've still got um, almost 500 wind turbines still. I think it was 48 per block. 48. We can do 10 entire blocks added to this. Where am I going? Oh, I did this 8 by. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. These type of wind turbines are not as efficient, but the positive thing about them is they don't need to be adjusted for winds shifting and can handle bursty winds a bit better. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty obvious. 
Like, uh, if, if, if you imagine the wind changing very quickly. Uh, against something like this, it absolutely doesn't care. Um, it's like, it, it doesn't have a direction that it's facing. Why does my math keep ending up wrong? We've still got 136 of these. What is math? Alright, 31 to go. There we go. Alright, now we need big power poles. Connect to the main network. And... Now wind tur Look at that jump in how much power we're getting from our wind turbines. It actually got up to the point where, like a solar panel, it's not bothering anymore. Like, this is its actual potential amount. Wait, does that mean... Now steam turbines are slowing down. And I don't think it's because they're out of fuel. It may be because they're out of fuel. No, we've got fuel here. We've got steam, so we're not putting more fuel in. Uh, yeah, steam turbines are at zero. Wow. Why does this only say 22 megawatts? Um, is this connected to everything? Ah, uh, That doesn't help. We've got two power networks. Um, let's fix that, shall we? Are you sure it's the same network? Indeed. Alright, how does it look now? Uh, wind turbines are doing a lot more work now, and it looks like they're going to stay at their peak. As as you would expect. Um, we're actually at 480 megawatts. I, I suspect there's a bit of catching up to do right now, because, like, roboports have to recharge and stuff. That's a win, that's a fail. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> okay, so... Steam turbines... Um... Just shot right back up. Okay. May as well continue accidentally picking up this copper. It's going to make it a lot easier when we want to use this block. Um, let's go build our fuel refineries up here. I think we already did a few by accident. No? I definitely queued up making 14 of these earlier, didn't I? With uh, handcrafting. I wonder what happened to the rest of them. Hmm. Uh, I guess I could look for them. Fuel refinery. Oh, I put them in here, of course. How did I end up with three of these then? Alright, give them back, now that we're not filling out inventory with, uh, the bots are busier than I expected. Um, let's just put this in here for now. You know what? Why don't I do the kind thing and actually just put this in here? Save the bots the trouble. Alright. Let's reorganize our inventory, and that's a lot of trains. I definitely don't need this many trains right now. Once 20 to infinite. 
Yeah, no. Uh, one stack at best. Storage chests near mall empty a station? Up here? Oh, you mean over here? Yeah, that would be a good idea. But I think the bots are going to keep going, like, trying to put things in wherever they already belong, regardless. Um, like, they're not going to use these for a good long while. But I guess it can't hurt. I could belt this way over here to make it easier for them. Um, but yeah, they've got... Oh my god. They've got an awful lot of stone to catch up with because of that mistake I made. Warita, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Instant plus 460 megawatts? Is it really that much? Uh, oh, from reconnecting the power networks, yeah. We are getting 87 megawatts from wind turbines. That is not nothing. In fact, at the moment... They're doing about half as much as the steam turbines. Okay. Uh, so I want... 21... Uh, greenhouses. Don't actually have any. I'm disappointed in myself for not queuing these up for a time when I would need them. We do have the atmospheric condensers, we only need one. Per build. Um, I actually do need this wood to handcraft greenhouses. And we need some glass. Alright, that's ten. Now we need more wood. I don't actually have a request for wood here. But we've got a good 4.9k lying around. That'll do it. Alright, let's... I think I need some yellow belt as well if I don't want to change that build. Uh, yellow belt. It's all over the place. Okay, okay. That should be more than enough. I need some undergrounds as well. I don't suppose they'd happen to be in the same chests. I, I kind of wish we could get the bots to reorganize this stuff so it's not all placed totally at random. Okay, if that's not enough, I would be shocked. I'm sure there's something missing I can probably handcraft. We definitely need an offshore pump. Although the water's so slow that we could probably steal it from somewhere else. We need a bunch of efficiency modules in order to get the most uh, power out of this. Net power, that is. A moment of silence for mall bots, indeed. Shift C, that might have been a good idea. That would have been a very good idea, actually. Uh, let's drop... 10 of... Wait, what? Oh, I didn't have the wood on me. No, that doesn't make sense. I dropped it on the ground. Okay, that does make sense. I was going to say, how am I suddenly not able to handcraft what I just cancelled? I forgot to pick up yellow loaders. I only need 35. Oh yeah, because loaders don't use power, so I used a lot of them here. Okay. Yellow loaders. Let's go get them. 
A lazy search indicates no available mod that defragments Storch. That's a good word for it, yeah. That's exactly what I had in mind. Defragment storage. Defrag the storage. Uh, let's get our loaders. And... Get out of here, Roboports. Actually, I'll do a shift. No, I'm scared of what I'll drop if I do a shift C. Especially because I'm deliberately carrying stuff I don't normally request. Okay. Away we go. And last but not least, I need to come back with efficiency modules. I don't know if we've still got some lying around on this planet. We don't. How many efficiencies do we need for one build here? Oh wait, I had a blueprint for this. Why did I copy-paste it? Here we go. 72. I'll do a little dedicated build for that. We've definitely got all of that input available. Fantastic. We need a electric boiler. We don't have a heat shield. And then we need uh, 14 gas power stations. Uh, I can do four. It's going to be a lot of handcrafting. I don't think I have the multi-cylinder engines. Let's do a quick dedicated build for that as well. In fact, all of these things. Um, greenhouses. Give me a substation up here. Um, we've already got the atmospheric condensers, fuel refineries, and gas power stations. Taking their sweet time with the power pole. I could pick a dollies this up here. There we go. Alright, and what is this stack to? 25. That's enough. I'll make it two stacks. This goes to 50. One stack for you. And 10. I think we need 14. So we'll do that. As for efficiency ones, they're not expensive, and sometimes we find we need a whole lot of them. So I think I'll just limit that to like 10 stacks. Uh, and I was going to do the electric boiler myself, because we need them so rarely that I'm not going to fully automate them. Well, I could put it in the auto crafter. That makes a lot of sense. Let's do that so that we'll have it next time. Uh, maybe more than one, even if the crafting combinator with the slow update is, uh, is going to make a lot more than one each time, more than likely. I'd still rather have a stack lying around. Or maybe 20 or something. Sort and stacker for Spidertron's warehouse chests would be really nice, similar to that in Dyson Sphere program. I haven't seen that in Dyson Sphere program, but I definitely agree. Um, Alright, let's set this to like 20. It'll probably overshoot by a significant margin as well. Um, so we'll have way more boilers than we actually need when we go looking for them. Uh, I needed 72 efficiency modules, right? That is at least 7. Let's borrow these speed modules. I 
and we've actually got our 14 gas power plants already. Um, I think I already placed... yeah, I did. So I just need... that's it, actually. Efficiency modules will make it better, but I don't strictly need them. I'll wait till there's 72. And then we just have to feed it water. Um, it's not a terribly convenient spot to connect it. Let's just do it like this. And then we need some power. that to the main network. There's our water. There's our wood. Coming in very, very slowly. Could you please show which tech set distance between starts to 10k? Uh, I don't understand the question. Um, but I'm happy to answer it if we can figure that out. LSF, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. In DSP, it is a little icon at the top right of the inventory that you can click. Oh, nice. Greetings, Night Dancer. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. All right, that's everything but wood in our biomethanol. Now I'd like to expand this. How long was I muted for? Just a little while, I hope. Muted? Uh, I was. I don't know if I was muted for like a sentence or significantly more than that. Did I say hello to LSF and Night Dancer? That's what I'm really concerned about. A minute tops? Okay. Um, all right, let's grab ourselves gas power plants, a few fuel refineries, greenhouses, efficiency modules. Muted after you pasted the copy. Okay. I also need more unloaders. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I wanted to put the efficiency modules in the one that's working. It won't make that big of a difference, but... Oh, it's already too late. In previous streams, you explained why it is better to build base on the last moon. As I remember, because the distance... Oh, yes, 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 yes. Uh, so... Uh, sort of spoilers if you care about that, uh, for sort of a... I wouldn't exactly call it a secret in the game, you will find it eventually. Um, but there is an anomaly called Foenestra, which is equal distances from all solar systems. 
and all uh like all destinations on the interstellar map like um asteroid fields and stuff like that so if we send a spaceship from this point here to Foenestra, that's 10,000. And then from Foenestra to any other entry slash exit point um, on another, uh, in another solar system, that's also 10,000. So not counting the distance that it takes to go like from here to here and so on. Uh, the entire trip is 10,000 times 4. Um, we go to Foenestra, to the destination, to Foenestra, and back home. Um, and it's it, the entire thing is 40k distance plus whatever distance we have to cover in the solar systems. And considering that, like... All right, let's look at how much delta V it takes to get from Hagen to the nearest star. Uh, we'll just go for the orbit of Kalmea. Um, so delta V, which is the same as distance in this game. Uh, oops. Kalmea orbit is... Oh, it's going to fill up with fuel. I think it'll spit the fuel back out into here, though. I ha Let's find out, actually. This is a good opportunity. Um, I can't actually click on that for the moment, but it's like 222k. Uh, let's see. It doesn't say it here. I shouldn't have bothered with this. Um, let's point this at Hagen Orbit. It deleted the fuel. That's really unfortunate. I thought it would push it back into here. We just lost like 170,000 liquid rocket fuel because I set this to a different destination momentarily. Thanks for the explanation. You're welcome. The travel time in system is long. Yeah, it's not like like real space. Um, it's not what you would, would expect. If we go from somewhere in Calidus to somewhere in Asimius, uh, a significant portion of the journey is actually in system. So if we're going from Hagen to the interstellar map instead of from Nalvis to the interstellar map, that's actually a pretty big difference. It is a massive difference if we're using Foenestra. Does Orbit need copper still, or did I miss a refill? I'm pretty sure it needs copper still, but we've got other problems. Uh, we've got other squirrels to chase right now. Um, Alright, give me more of these just in case. Why do we have no fuel refineries? That's a bit worrying. I don't think we have green circuits. We definitely have green circuits. We just have to wait for the trains. Yep. Guess it will be time for core mining. Yes, indeed. Yeah, um, considering how really, really small the uh, core fragments are, or the stack sizes, like, it's going to be bad until we get to that late game exploiting that... Um, like, I, I think they, I think with the new version, they really, really want you to do core fragment processing on each planet, uh, to which I say no, I, I would prefer not to. Um, so it's, we're definitely losing some efficiency by not, like, doing a whole lot of processing on this planet and then compacting it into the densest stack size stuff that we can come up with, like ingots. Um, but like, especially with productivity bonuses, um, uh, without going to the trouble of putting things into ingots and stuff, if you look at how many stacks of stuff we get, let me just do a little demo right here, actually. 
So we're going to put in... Uh, we're going to do a pulverizer. We're going to pick vanilla core fragments. Or normally Nalvis wouldn't be an outpost. Let's pick something like Vulcanite core fragments. Um, and ignore the fact that we also get to transport fluid as a solid with this, even though it's not much fluid. Um, but we get, uh, zero to four. I'm just going to set this to a thousand. Should be a decent sample size. Uh, there's no randomness in this. It is deterministic with the, like, zero to four. I wish it would just say a percentage. Uh, and, like, a little bit of vulcanite and stone we get out of this. So this is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 50 stacks. Let's make it 100 stacks. And we're going to put in uh, super speed modules. No productivity bonuses. Going to give it some power. And we're going to see exactly how many stacks it takes up uh, when it finishes processing all of that. And I've done a couple of these experiments. Uh, it, it actually varies. Oh, I need to void the fluid as well. Um, I don't know, I kind of like to get an idea of how much fluid we're also transporting before we have spaceships as well. So zero productivity bonuses, we're going through... I forgot to remove this. All right, let's reset this thing. We've got exactly uh, 2k. 100 stacks of Vulcanite core fragments. And we're going to see how many stacks it takes up after we process it. And it's actually not as many as you might... Well, no, uh, it's... um, It's more than... It, it's more efficient than you might think still to move these as core fragments is what I'm getting at. This is without even productivity bonuses. Um, so we're already up to 80. It's it's definitely a lot more stack dense um, as is. Unless we go through a whole lot of other steps to turn this into like stone brick perhaps, uh, process all the vanilla core fragments, iron ingots, copper ingots, and so on, and so on. Um, obviously Vulcanite would be a lot more stack efficient if we processed it first. But like, I really don't want to have huge outposts. I want pretty much the minimum um, on each outpost to bring back what we're looking for. Stack size is really bad now. Yes, yes it really is. With productivity it may calculate out as better to transport CF. It might, especially with prod nines, like that's not even much of a question. It is required to delete core from infinite chest. Uh, yeah, I, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, our input was 100 stacks. We've now got... Almost 140 stacks. Probably like 100 and... Well, if we round up, uh, it is 138 stacks. Are you winning yet? I hope so. I kind of lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, we're making more... Um, we're making more power up here. And I forgot the... 
I didn't really forget. The one thing I did forget last time was the loaders. Let's grab those. I think we've got everything else. What about fuel refineries? I don't have any. I can handcraft them though. But I, I made an automation... 22. That's more than enough. Okay. Oh, that's a passive... Prov How did this happen? Well, there's your problem. No wonder we're making all this other stuff, but not fuel refineries. But yeah, um, getting the travel distance down to 40k and then some, like less than 50k every time, that's going to have a huge impact on how easy it is to move these, uh, to move this stuff, obviously. Do I not have construction? Oh, I see. There we go. So that is about 60 megawatts once we've completely finished uh, each one of these. Time to relocate, <laughs> indeed. Uh, if, you, if you relocate as early as I did, you're going to run into some challenges, so be prepared for that. I think we still probably need more efficiencies. No? I thought we needed 72 per block. I don't think I didn't think I picked up that many. But I th think we're good, actually. How's our power looking? Um, I mean, it's good, but we've got steam turbines. I, I want to see how bad it is if we disconnect the nuclear reactor without trying to calculate it. So I just need to disconnect that there. Oh really? Oh really? I think we're good actually. Yeah. Which, uh, if, if I've built this right, that means we won't be consuming any more nuclear fuel until it goes over. Fantastic. Why are these ones empty first? That's kind of interesting. That's kind of very interesting. Oh, because the heat gets there last, obviously. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, uh, that... I think I calculated this before, but viscerally I'm kind of surprised that this was already enough. I mean, it's not just this, it's also this. I think I calculated we needed three of these. Um, three times this. To get our power over the line again. Now that I've automated it, the uh, production of the stuff that makes this system. Um, I think I would like to spam out another one. Because I really don't want to have power problems again until we can get CoverX and automate nuclear properly. Let's just get one more. Uh, offshore pump. They do have a minimum power consumption of zero, so it really doesn't matter if we have extra. It does matter if we don't connect it up to the main network, though. But 
but yeah, I really like the, uh, I was gonna say I really like the Foenestra puzzle, that's not quite right. Um, I like the emergent puzzle of, if you set up a relay system for your spaceships using Foenestra, uh, it's complex, but there, there's lots of rewards for doing that. Or, oh, there's one reward, and it's a big one. Um... I'd definitely like to see more things like that. The, uh... The numbers that are not called numbers puzzle, I was less impressed with. And I'll take that. Even though it won't be enough to finish it just yet. Wait a sec, we need more loaders. And we need more regular yellow belt. And we hardly need any yellow undergrounds, actually. I'm not seeing what I'm looking for, so we'll do a search. It's only in here? Hmm. Where, oh where, could my loaders be? There they are. Might need a little bit more yellow belt. Uh, I didn't actually search for yellow belt. It should be all over the place. Uh, what? Oh, there it is. Sneaky. That should be enough. Let's grab the rest of the efficiency modules. Almost enough to finish in one go. The mole train is no pathing. Alright, we'll have a look at that in a sec. As soon as I've got my bots doing some work. The mole train is no pathing. So it is. Where is it trying to go? Huh. A apparently it does have a path. Wait, what? Oh, it's trying to go to the other return to mall, and we're clicking on this isn't showing it. Yeah, I, I expected this to be the new build. This one. There's a few signals missing down here, that's why. Alright, let's get this train to visit over here. And that might be enough to resolve the issue. We should double check, but I'm pretty sure... Yeah, we're not even getting close to using up half a belt. We don't have to worry about merging the wood properly. We're missing two gas power plants, actually. And, of course, a electric boiler and yellow splitters and pipes. Yellow splitters, pipes, and gas power plants. Alright, let's go get them. That should put us well ahead for a while. Yellow... splitter. Um, yoink. I guess there's a few more splitters in that build than I realized. Oh, and efficiency modules. Still not going to be enough to finish it. Modules 2, indeed. The modules aren't super critical, they just mean that A, we get more power, 
net power out of the whole thing. Um, and B, it's much less prone to sputtering and dying if there's if there's a power problem. Because it needs power to make power. It needs the power to get the power. Looks like it's all working. No input fluid. Uh, it'll take the longest time for the wood to get over here. That's to be expected. I guess I could kickstart it a little bit, but I don't know that that would actually help anything. Oh, yeah, no, I forgot. Wood comes from here to here as well. So it's not going to be that bad. Alright. So it's not perfect yet, but... Again, I'll disconnect the steam. Oh, it is still consuming steam. Even though we know we're ahead. That's weird. I'm just going to switch that off for now. I really don't want to waste our precious little heat that we can't replace at the moment. Or a precious little steam. Um, oh, I haven't checked on CMEs in a long time. CME... Energy beams. Oh, it's right here. There's one heading for Nalvis and one heading for Muir. So we don't need to worry about that anytime soon. Now this should still be fine for power. Uh, let's see. There's our steam battery. It's completely full. Yeah. Uh, we're not <laughs> we're not having any trouble with CMEs on Nalvis for a while. Not unless uh, there's one that's so powerful that we actually need more steam turbines connected to this whole system. Uh, but, what was it? 2.28 gigawatts? That's like your standard CME. Okay. But yeah, uh, we've actually got by a significant margin, we've got enough power, and it's completely renewable. So that'll be the last uh, power problem for a hot minute. Let's sort out our inventory. And try to remember what it was we were trying to do before we had to chase some squirrels. We're actually already full on crushed vulcanite, so let's hurry up and let me just check on our outpost. Oh, timing. I was just wondering when it would be launching the next rocket. Do we have... We're down... We we've just run out of cargo rocket sections over here. Okay. And what about the resupply of those? We have an awful lot of packed cargo. Wow, okay. This should actually be launching already. Why doesn't it have liquid rocket fuel? It does have some liquid rocket fuel. That implies... You're joking. Are we short? No, we've got 200k here. I would have felt pretty bad about accidentally deleting, like, 170k just by changing destination on this uh, cargo rocket. Um, if we had a shortage of liquid rocket fuel at the moment. But no, we've, we're completely saturated on liquid rocket fuel. I think 
maybe I know the default train limit is either unlimited or it's at least greater than one so it should definitely be scheduling liquid rocket fuel here we haven't changed anything since it did work oh I think I see the problem I think we have, like, two, uh, fluid wagons, uh, fluid trains. And one of them is in use over here. The other one is waiting its turn to get back into the mall, uh, get back into the depot. And the depot is full. So, there's that. Let's make another depot, uh, for long trains. And I'm thinking nice and close to the Vulcanite core fragment processing wouldn't be the worst idea. Um, then again, maybe I should put the next depot up here, um, as far away from the existing depot as possible. Yeah, let's do that. And this is actually a really good opportunity to, to double check. Um, double check that our depot blueprint doesn't need anything fixed or updated. Because we ended up with some weird... Uh, some weird belts and stuff on the other planet, but I think it was because I carelessly copy-pasted some stuff. Yeah, this actually looks correct. Um, we probably want to run it on... solid... rocket fuel? Say two train loads. Oh, this is a short train, is it? Wait, what? Uh, short train or long train is fine. I thought we had a blueprint for. Oh, I must have changed it. That's fine. That's pretty weird, actually. Maybe I copy-pasted instead of using the blueprint last time. No? I would have copy-pasted this. I'm very confused as to how that ended up like that on the other outpost. Well, our first outpost, I guess. Don't count Hagen as an outpost. Okay. Um, let's copy this and put it about here. Send our construction train. Hopefully has everything we need. And that way I won't have to go over there myself. It'll probably have to make multiple trips though, because there's a lot of uh, a lot of train stops. Still no pathing? Uh, this one? Oh, because there's no signals here still, probably? Or something? Yeah, there's no signals over here. I'm just going to go take signals over there myself. And see if that makes the difference. I'll take some extra signals. Oops. What's missing up here? Oh. Cheat inserters. Probably want to remove that from that blueprint. Alright. 
Right, is our train on the way? No path. It definitely has a path to it over here. Wait, let me just check. No path to return to Mall. Return to Mall, okay. It should definitely have a path. It does have a path. Do I have another station called Return to Mall somewhere? How can I look them all up? There's four of them. Can I step through them? I thought I only had two. How do I find the rest? Hmm. Oh, here they are. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, this one should have path. Uh, this one actually doesn't exist because we accidentally never put the train stop there. Um, where else could it be? Train overview above the map? Train overview above of the map. Let me just save real quick because if I use LTN manager it crashes. Um, train overview above the... oh these buttons that I never notice? Trains. Here we go. Stations. Uh, mall returns. No, return to mall. Okay, there's this one, there's this one, uh, this one. I think this is the only one I haven't looked at. Did I remove a signal? Doesn't look like it. Hmm. Oh, it's moving. Maybe it... It'll probably still have no path. Because there's a station somewhere that's trying... Trying its level best. It's not this one. This is train limit zero. This is train limit zero. This one doesn't exist. Uh, stations, return to mall. You can actually see the train limits. Zero out of one. It must be this one. Does it really not have a path here? It does not. Huh. Why is that? There's a... There's a little piece of straight rail missing. Bruh. Sneaky. It's a vanilla feature. Yes. That nobody uses these days. Okay. Um, rather than involve... Oh, let's see if this is built. It is about as built as I expected, to be honest. Let's send the construction train back there again. And I'll personally go and place that last, uh, train stop for the... the vanilla pickup the cargo rocket sections and such. There we go. Train limit one. Alright, so at this rate we're going to need another trash train soon, but maybe just because it's been backing up, because stuff wasn't working. Did we actually build this? I think we did. Alright, so we should... Oh, there we go. I was going to say, we should start seeing trains drop in here. Uh, let's make ourselves another couple of fluid wagons. And it would probably help if they had fuel. Can we get some fuel delivered over here? Yes, we can. Beautiful. Fantastic. And let's just activate these already. Ten solid rocket fuel each. 
uh, in each locomotive should be enough to carry them until this is all saturated. Okay, let me add a little icon here to tell us this. This this is a depot for long trains. And that should do it. So we just doubled our fluid wagons and... Uh, you know what? While we're at it, even more fluid wagons, please. Off you go. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't get run over. Okay. And once more. So we are tripling our fluid wagons and they have a place to sleep. Fantastic. I really like this layout. Okay. What's next? We've sorted out power. Oh, I have some efficiency modules that need to be placed. My M.2 just failed and I lost my factory. Oh no. Back up yo factories, everyone. Sorry to hear that, uh, vegan. As an FYI, you have a train building spot on the south side of the mall as well. Did I actually set that up as a building spot? I did. Oh, that... <laughs> I completely forgot about it. Yeah, we even have, like... I should put some signaling here. We're, we're blocking the roundabout when we build this. Um, but yeah, I totally forgot about that. Our construction train has gotten back already. Uh, I'm pretty sure I checked and this is built. Yes, good. Fantastic. And solid rocket fuel is finding its way to these trains. Huh. There's a bit of waste here, actually. Should probably fix that. Okay. So we're way ahead on efficiency modules now. Uh, the next thing I'd like to set up, I think, is... I'll probably just do it in this block. On second thought, I want to keep these robo-networks separate so the bots have very short trips. Otherwise, I would definitely like to put, like, four... four of these together. Um, is this actually empty? It pretty much is. Cool, let's get rid of it. Um, provide threshold... 1? Priority... yes, not that it, it... it's already set as high priority, actually. Um, but as soon as there's room, the train will go and pick that up. Still no rocket fuel delivery? Uh, what do you mean by that? To the new... Uh... Oh, liquid rocket fuel. Hmm. That is very strange. We've got basically zero liquid rocket fuel here. We're requesting 100k, which is two fluid trains. Negative 100k. Oh. I must have removed the uh, request threshold. Request stack threshold doesn't work for fluids. And... Schedule? And schedule? And schedule. 
We're getting to the point where it doesn't schedule as quickly. We've definitely got trains available. And we should have plenty. Yeah, we've got plenty of... Uh... Oh, there it is. As soon as I looked away, literally... It literally must have scheduled the, like, the frame that I clicked away from that. Okay. Um, so we're going to deconstruct this as soon as it's empty. Don't know what else we'll do with this block. Um, I want to do this again, but somewhere... This is actually a perfect spot for it, I think. Um, I want this to have its own separate robo network. And switch that off for now. We're going to need a signal receiver and a cargo rocket silo. Actually, why don't I just bring the construction train over? It might have those things already. It does. Okay. Um, 30 seconds should be enough. So I want to set this to receive signals from Hagen Orbit. Uh, lazy science. And we should have one up here, I think. We don't? I could have sworn I left signal transmitters and receivers up here just in case. I think this was when I was making a shopping list to go to Granis. Hmm... Alright, um, why don't I just grab a space capsule, since I'm literally just going to transport a couple of things. And I'll put all my stuff in here for now. Uh, we'll need some life support. We won't really need some life support. It will be a few seconds. Uh, solid rocket fuel. We need seven cargo rocket sections. Do we have those here? We do. Do we need any cargo rocket sections to drop back down to the planet without having to, like, refurbish the pod. Oh, there's some upstairs anyway. It's probably fine. And... Fuel is 84. Really? Damn. 84 solid... Yeah, we need like double this amount of solid rocket fuel. Um, alright. Solid, a rocket, a fuel, oh, yeah, those are some places I can always find it. Uh, is this enough? It is, just barely. Do we have solid rocket fuel up here? We do, it's part of science. 2.7k. Alright. And I want to take a signal transmitter. And signal receivers. Not that I anticipate needing signal receivers up there right now. But I would like to not have to repeat this. Lazy Susan would be more fun. Wait, what? Are the new trains turned on? Good question. Uh, was it these two? Yeah, they are. 
the other ones I built down at the mall, so if they're not here, they're definitely switched on. Alright, so now we need another six uh, solid rocket fuel. Cargo capacity, two out of twenty. But... Yeah, 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 the fuel requirement changes as we actually use some of that cargo capacity. Alright, let's go up to Hagen Orbit. Drop off a few... Items. And back to Hagen. We actually need three solid rocket fuel and nothing else. That's pretty reasonable to go back to Hagen. I didn't even need a single second of life support. Okay. Um, you can have this back, and I'll go back to the mall, if I can fly far enough. There we go. And then we'll set up... I don't really have room for it right here. Oh, it doesn't have to be close to the cargo landing pad. In fact, it should be close to a roboport, if anything. We've got six spare if I really want to move some. Okay, so signal, friends, meta. I probably should have. Um. Yeah, I. Probably should have made sure that we had ample storage space. Um, I think we maybe probably do. I hope. We need 500 stacks for each different resource that we're going to be requesting, theoretically. Um, we need to request processing units, uh, copper, iron, three types of, wait, processing units, yeah, 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 uh, copper, iron, steel, I think, where does the steel come in, here it is, copper, iron, steel, plate, three kinds of, uh, circuit, so that's six, Glass, silicon is eight. Heat shield, probably... Do we actually need heat shield? I'd be surprised if we didn't need heat shield, because we need LDS. Um, I'm not seeing it, though. How about you set rough data substrate and efficiency one from Hagen? That's probably a pretty good idea. Um, rough data storage. Yeah, that's definitely more stack density. I'd have to go to the trouble of building it, but I have to go to the trouble of supplying it anyway. Uh, or the... It's either supply that or supply two, twice as many things to go up here. Um, but yeah, I didn't finish going through the list, but we're going to need roughly 10 to 12 times 500 stacks of storage space to, to make absolutely sure that this is going to work. I'll probably send another cargo rocket up there with, um, 
with storage chests. Um, so 5,000 over 48. We need, let's say 150. I make it 200. Storage chests should be way more than enough. To make sure that we can dump all of the resources that we send up there uh, into the logistic network. And send a cargo rocket at a time for each resource. Okay. Um, I think it's about time I take a little break, to be honest. Green's getting a bit limp. Let's do a save real quick. And we'll throw up some words on stream. Oh, it's actually... It's actually been three and a half hours already. Okay. And... Copy link. I'm still need to do the uh, data cards today, but the, there have been too many... It's been the opposite of, like, doing things on the outpost planet, uh, Granis. Instead of having stretches where we have to wait for something, so we may as well design something, um, we're just chasing squirrels like crazy on Hagen today. With the uh, power problems and all these other things. Alright, we'll start words on stream in about... Let me just double check I got that right. Yep, we're good. We'll start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. Good luck, have fun, and I'll see you soon.
Okay. Let's continue, shall we? Fantastic. Nicely done. Uh, and I was just thinking, how many radars would it take to have vision over all of this when we use the LTN screensaver? We need some rare metals for the big one. Rare metal. We do have some in the mall. Wait, what? The, what? Huh? What the? It says it's in a storage. <laughs> what is going on here? I'm so confused. Um. You know what? I'll just take that rare metal. We'll make an advanced radar. There we go. Y you win this round. Two boxes are marked. Oh, so it's pointing to the middle of them. That was so weird, though. It looked like it was just pointing to the buffer warehouse. Okay, if I drop a advanced radar around about here, for example, what do we get? Oh, yes, please. That, that's a good start. Let's bring it over here. And medium pole. Hmm. I'm going to need a few more. Hey, can I ask you if you could update your K2SE blueprint on Factorio prints when you have time? With my relocate, I'm going to use your block based design. Thanks. Uh, sure, no worries. We could do that. Um, let's place it next to the big drill. That's... that's a good start. We're gonna need one way over here. That's huge? Yeah. It's nice. I feel like something like this should be in vanilla, honestly. But something even bigger in space exploration would be nice. Um... Or even just like a... a setting... A, a mod setting whereby having the navsat just gives you vision on the entire planet. Maybe there's a UPS reason to not do that though. All right, that's pretty good. Did you disable biters for this run? No. As a matter of fact, I had the Rampant mod active for this run. Um, it's just that the two planets we've gone to, other than Nalvis, happen to have 0% biters, thankfully. But also, on Nalvis, um, eventually the mod caused massive uh, UPS drops, and I mean... We were at 60, and then all of a sudden, less than a minute later, we were at 20 and dropping. Um, and that was just caused by telling a lot of biters to attack, or something. Um, so you can see I pushed the biters back quite far. Um, I actually pushed them back considerably further than, than you can see right now, since I trimmed the surface so that the save file would be smaller. Um... And, and it wouldn't take as long to save the game. Um, the reason I pushed them so far back, well beyond the... There's like no pollution cloud here. Wow. Wow. Okay. Uh, anyway, the reason that I pushed them so far back is... With Rampant, they don't just wait until they're sucking pollution to attack you. They'll attack significantly before that. Um, so I pushed them fairly far back, and then we had to disable the Rampant mod. So now the biters are a lot less aggressive. Expansion is turned off, uh, which it was from the beginning. And they're just too far away to get aggravated to attack on Nalvis. That's huge. Oh, the yes, yes, yes. 
Uh, got it, thanks, no worries. Do minion. Uh, triple X poser, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Let's try here. For a radar. That's not too bad. And then we'll put one over here, I think. Roughly. Do I have any? Yeah, I've got two. Okay. I won't worry about these outposts. Hmm. I could maybe move this over a little bit further. It's still got permanent vision, I think. Nice. All right, let's bring this one. Look at that. Look at the mini map. The blue that's showing is the range of the radar that I'm about to place. I can barely, barely get it to not cover the entire mini map. That's the permanent range of this thing. It's approximately one mini map. That's a pretty good yardstick, actually. Um, okay, so maybe about here. That's really good, actually. But then there's a gap over here. Um, I could probably put this one about here somewhere. Let's give that a try. They do suck up a lot of power. Well, 2 megawatts is relatively small in Crestorio 2. We're getting like 50, 60 megawatts. Uh, I, I, I calculated it as approximately 60 megawatts consistently per set of biomethanol plants. That's good. Alright, let's see what the LTN screen saver looks like now. And normally I'd look at chat, but it's a bit slow at this instant. Okay. Um, are we not... I definitely activated LTN's screensaver. There we go. Just complete vision all the way. Looks like we're... Where is this train going? I can't click on it while we're doing this. It's gonna get stone or something. Well, the important thing is, like, 99% of the time we've got vision. Oh, it is getting stone. Fantastic. Okay, back to the mall. So how much power are we paying for that little luxury? Uh, 10 megawatts, I think? Yeah, exactly 10 megawatts. We need less space exploration? What? No, I think we need more space exploration. Always, right? The West dude, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why have I got iron ingots? Um, okay, so the only thing I can think... What the... What the missing power pole? That, sh that should probably cover it. The only thing I can think of that I should be doing right now... Well, there's two things. There's vulcanite processing. And there's resupplying the science automatically and fully. Hold on, what? Didn't I tell you to stop for five seconds? A lighted big electric pole. It definitely. Wait, don't tell me. Uh, is the. Is the RoboPort tired? It's not. 
Why didn't it place it? Light. Oh, it's there's a tree in the way. That that wasn't a missing lighted electric power pole. That was a missing tree blueprint that we copy pasted. It's a tree, not a power pole, indeed. Yeah. Well, there's your problem. Okay. Um, so there's two things to work on right now. There's vulcanite processing, and there's resupplying the science upstairs. Um, in order to do the science upstairs, we probably need to add some more storage first. But I can always just try it and see what happens. If the, if the landing pad ends up being full... It's not that big of a deal to fix it. I'll just jump back into space again. Um, so, we've got our system here for resupplying uh, Pagan Orbit. Pagan Orbit Lazy Sites is our channel. Um, and we're going to put a RoboPort here. Vulcanite, then you can add it to resupplying as well. Yeah, I want to get this done first so it can tick over doing what little science we have left before we need the um, production science packs. Uh, I think I'll steal from myself to figure this out because I don't have the best focus right now. Alright, so... We don't need to request space capsules this time. In fact, we'll just have to send them back. But I could definitely borrow from this. I need to be careful to change this back really quick, though. Okay, that's good. Um, now then. We're not looking for space capsules. And we're not looking for cargo rocket sections. And we're not looking for media defense. Although, this would actually... I don't know if it's worth the logistics to send it up here, but... Well, no, we're not spamming solar panels up here just yet. It's a bit of a pain to get the scaffolding up and everything. Alright, so let's identify all of our inputs that we need. For our current science setup. Uh, first of all, we need lubricant barrels. We are recycling the barrels, right? Yeah, they're right here. Okay. Uh, let's get a constant. Oh, let's just put a signal of one for each of these until we're we're sure we've figured it out. Um, we need. Lubricant as barrel. We need heavy oil as barrel. We need petroleum barrels as well, actually. Although I don't think we're running out of any of those anytime soon. Petroleum barrel. I could get uh, petroleum delivered from Granis, which actually has a surplus of petroleum that it can't get rid of without venting it eventually. Um, but I'm not going back there just yet. What else? Three types of barrels. Um, But now I'll just do the resources the way they're already set up. We'll we'll increase the throughput like later when we can do proper once we get space rail, that's when we'll do that. Which is just barely into energy one. Need more power on Hagen orbit? Uh I don't think so. We're only using two point four out of eight megawatts here. The efficiency modules really helped. Oh, or was that if hypothetically I'm gonna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, 
we're going to need copper plate, electronic components. Oh, hold up. Let's start with this. I know we need iron, copper, steel, glass. Silicon. And then... And then and then and then... Electronic components. Compo. There we go. Greens. Uh, all three types of circuit. Low density structures, but not heat shield as far as I've noticed. Uh, small electric motors. Probably big electric motors. That's already sorted out. Uh, sulfur. Let's put that with the oil products. Ice. Not that we're running out of ice anytime soon. Well, we don't have any in the network yet. You know, ideally, I'd like to be able to automatically request this stuff from the rail network. We should probably have enough storage here for... Well, if I put enough storage for all of these things at both ends, then I could set it up to automatically request these things from the rail network. On the other hand, I could just request a flat amount. Um, but the barrel stack size is so much smaller than the other stack sizes. Now do you need more power? What do you mean? Oh, what's this? What did it do? Huh? Wait, really? The 10 megawatts from this? Oh, what? 10 megawatts? That's more than I realized. Hmm. Do we have solar panels here? We do not. I could send some up. I think I'll do that. What about scaffolding? We can't make scaffolding on the ground, can we? Scaffolding... only made in space. Uh, what do we make it out of? LDS heat shield steel plate. Alright. I'm going to request heat shield here as well. Heat shield and LDS are siblings, they always go together. Um, but it was heat shield, LDS, and steel plate. Let's get... how many solar panels do we have handy? 3k, that's quite good. Let's send them all. Whoops. I know where to find solar panels, actually. Um, and then we need to send stuff to make scaffolding. Requester. And passive. Scaffolding. Luckily we can make it in this little machine. Uh, per minute, 7.5. So that's like less than one solar panel per minute. But I think that'll be fine. I'll limit that to like... Uh, 4.8k will be fine, actually. Okay. 
Uh, heat shield LDS steel is what we're going to add after... How much have we got up there at the moment? Heat shield, 4.1k, 3k LDS, 9.2k steel. Oh, um, we can actually make a bunch of this already. Cool. What about solar panels? Can we actually make those already? It's probably just easier if I send a whole bunch of them up. I may as well send whatever we're stalled on. Is it lubricant? Really? No, we've got a million belt saved up. Um, but we are out of lubricant and uh, uh, heavy oil. We shouldn't be... Oh, that heavy oil is from scrapping. I see. I'm going to run out of space for that eventually. Um, yeah, we shouldn't really be using heavy oil to turn into lubricant there. Although, if that's one to one, 20 heavy oil becomes 20 lubricant. Maybe we shouldn't send lubricant up, we should just send it as heavy oil to keep that simple. I think I've already got a bunch of barrels, though. Not that they're in the rail network or anything. Petroleum... Heavy oil. We didn't barrel lubricant. Okay, good. Sense-making. Um... Let's see. Just browse the spaghetti a bit more. We need solid rocket fuel, stone... I already said blue circuits. Stone, solid rocket fuel. Oh, uh, tech cards, of course. But I think I would like. By the time I, we've got a, we've got a store of tech cards here. Um, and by the time I build them on the ground, I just want to send them in their own cargo rockets. Um, so I think that's everything to get utility signs, and also to expand our base up here. Let's build out this way. Oh, that was quicker than expected. So what are we stalled on right this minute? It's just heavy oil. I should put back the uh, heavy oil barrel emptier. Put it here. It's pretty convenient. Okay. So we've got no machine learning data, no blank, no copper. That's what we need to send right now. Um, but I also want to send... How many, how many stacks do we have here? Oh, that's already 3k solar. Wow, we've got a lot of room in this. Uh, let's see... Let's call it 400 stacks. Um... Hundred stacks of each. Uh, we need heat shield LDS though. Let's make it five k. Low density structures. 
That should be getting close to full. I imagine. Wait, did I say 500 iron? Or did Heat Shield LDS... Did, did one of these just become a higher priority? Heat Shield is a higher priority. Okay, cool. John Valjon? John Valjon, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. What else should I send up here while we're doing a manual load? Well, manual. Semi-manual. Probably the oil barrels that I can just carry. Let's go get them. If I remember where I'm going. Fantastic. I'll grab a few more. We can have that half stack back. Alright, so I'm just gonna jam those right in there. It'll... Oh, wait. I don't want the bots taking these. There we go. Oh, it's taking out the heavy oil barrels because that's how I designed this. Whoops. Um, Alright, let's calculate. Uh, four stacks. Um, 64 stacks. Um, 200... 264 stacks and 464 stacks. We've got 36 stacks left. Um, 360 heavy oil barrels. Um, we should maybe put petroleum up here as well, but petroleum only goes into chemical gel which we've got an awful lot of backed up. It's only made, it's only for replacing the tiny amount of thermo fluid that we lose. So we won't need to replace that for a few minutes. Okay, that should be a full cargo rocket. Uh, Hagen orbit landing pad. Fantastic. Now we just have to wait for the bots to place some of this stuff. I can give them a hand, though. Um, let's get ourselves some iron plate. If I overload it, this thing will correct it. Uh, copper plate. Oh, here it is. There we go. Steel plate. What is that shape? Oh, that was me. Okay. Oh, uh, that looks weird. There's some steel. Shouldn't there be a filtered steel? Yeah, there is. How much steel is in here? Uh, 3.4k. Alright. Where's the rest? Um, not here. Yeah, uh, I might have to go flying to pick that up. Steel plate. There's a lot over here. Oh, here it That's not steel. Okay. Steel... That's not steel. Where are we going? Steel plate. Fantastic. That'll definitely push it over 5k. 
Uh, what are we looking for? 2k out. Oh, that's still 800 to go. And... I'm just going to put this in here for the moment. Less work for the pots. Alright, how much copper is in here? 7.5? Whoopsie. Uh, and then, what are we loading right now? LDS. Wait, no, that's not what I wanted. Huh? Did they take it already? I think they took it already. Some of these chests. Well, it's doing a partial defrag. We're still aiming for another 800 or something. There we go. And that just leaves. what? Uh, heavy oil barrels. That's not going to take the bots long. And that's it. Should have a full rocket in just a little while. Alright, um... Let's go ahead and place some more scaffolding. See how much we have. Another 89. That's actually jumping ahead a little bit. I must have miscounted. We've got another 50 stacks available. I could go get more heavy oil. That's probably for the best. We've got 30 stacks here. No shortage of actual heavy oil here either. One more. Fantastic. Wait, did we actually have enough heavy oil for that request? That's prob yeah, we did, otherwise it'd be on this signal here. Um What's this? Uh three hundred and twenty? We can do math this way if we want to. Heavy oil. 320. 360 plus 320. Get in there. And then... Oh! Oh! They put heavy oil down here for some reason. Okay. How much do we have here? Uh, hard to say. At least 50. Let's just ask them to fill the rest of it up. So, 180. Let's see how many more barrels we have here. Uh, on the way, 18. That's not a whole lot. We're almost there. Maybe I should just wait. Or maybe there's something else I can think of that we should put here. Oh, I stand corrected. We only need 50 more. Uh... Let's just go pick that up. Alright, so that will give us a whole lot of solar panels. And everything we need to make um, scaffolding so we can expand it. 
it'll also supply us everything we need to keep science going for a good while to come. And also the storage space uh, in the robot network to, to just keep spamming a whole cargo rocket full of each resource that we need um, to keep science going up here. So how many of these do we need for 10 megawatt? Um, we need about 91. Ninety-one, really. So that's like five times this. Yeah, we need to be up here-ish. Do we have any speed modules up here? That would have been good to think of ahead of time. We actually do. We do have the speed modules. I don't suppose we have a spare space manufacturing. We do not. Okay. We could do it this way. Except that's our last requester chest. Oh no. Um, let's see. Requester chest. Steal this one. And make some requester chests. They're reproducing. Oh, there's no green circuits? Are you serious? You're joking. After all that. Well, that's unfortunate. I guess that's the first thing we're sending up there. Um, let's expand our storage this way. I think. And remove the tile ghosts here for the moment. Well, I'll leave that there so I can see where I was heading towards. There's no, there's low power because of the uh, construction bots recharging. And the logistic bots for that matter. Is this your first time playing Factorio? No, it is not. A wild Dave that streams. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Uh, it's going to be a minute before... Hmm, could I... Maybe... No, nope, we're just going to have to wait for them to catch up. Alright, let's do some design work in that case. Actually, I probably need to hurry up and get this sorted out to some extent. We were making our list of stuff to resupply with the one cargo rocket. Um, I guess we'll just do green circuits first. We'll force it. That'll be a good, um, I don't want to say test. Well, test is actually pretty accurate. Okay, I think we can relax a little bit on... Oh, I see. Oh, I had that re request that high. Hmm... I just want to... We're only getting short trains delivering the space capsules, but... 
Well, we've got plenty of them. Uh, my only concern is... Let's set that to 40, actually. Wait, turn that off first. It's not like sending it to the outpost. Where we need to send cargo rocket sections. Uh, in fact, the fact that we're going to accumulate space capsules and cargo rocket sections at the other end is a problem. Uh, we are still going to request some packed cargo rocket sections, though, just because we need to actually launch the rocket, weirdly enough. So, 40 of those. Don't you need to remove the request for the rocket? Uh, what do you mean? Or Ayo, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Request threshold 50k, that's for the fluid. I'm going to need another constant combinator to fit. Um, I'll leave this essential stuff on that side. And then... I'll just copy from our list that we made up here. For the moment. Wait, no. No, I was just going to put green circuits here manually. Temporarily. No, we're still... We're still going to have to add all of these manually, unless we want to request, like, really weird amounts because of different stack sizes from LTN. Um... Yeah, so I guess I will add those one by one. Let's just put that there, and uh, electronic circuit, we're going to look for, I'll just go, I'll just go a couple of train loads. Um, I would rather not store 500 stacks of each resource here. So that should already be active, I think. Um, I'm just going to leave that as it is. Uh, we need to switch this one on. Request stack threshold 40. Liquid rocket fuel, short trains, long trains. And green circuits. It'll ignore all these other ones because I've got... Uh, provide threshold that's too high implicitly in the default settings. Alright, so give that maybe 5 or 10 seconds. Should schedule a delivery. Uh, we've got space capsules, cargo rocket sections, and liquid rocket fuel so that we can actually launch this thing. Uh, we're aiming it at Hagen Orbit Landing Pad. And we're going to launch on Cargo Full. You send a rocket to Hagen Orbit and you don't remove the request to fill that rocket? Oh, you mean back at the mall. Yeah. We're only manually launching it. Um, but yeah, you have a point. Um, you know what? I'll just copy this off... So that'll empty automatically now. Alright, trains are coming with space capsules, green circuits, liquid rocket fuel, and liquid rocket fuel all at once. They say no path. Why are we no pathing? Because... That's a good question, actually. Oh, I see the problem. Uh, when we copy-pasted this, the crude oil line that is still not in the rail network from earlier on that just pumps all the way uh, straight up to our oil processing uh, this one underground pipe blocked this signal. 
So now our trains are in motion. Are trains stuck? If you mean stuck, the answer is yes. Stuck because a single signal was missing. We need some Logibots in here. Let's go grab them. I'm not going to bother having those particular blocks automatically supply bots. It's just a one-off. Uh, but first I have to find the bots, though. Logi box. Uh, apparently there's three in here. Wow. And for some reason... Oh, I see. There's our bots. 50... I thought I was requesting Logibots, actually. Nope. Let's just request that so that next time we're doing this, I just happen to have them. It'll be one less inventory space indefinitely, but we'll live. This is the wrong block, actually. Alright, Logibots, do your thing. Fantastic. Uh, and I'm just going to put a constant combinator here to pretend that we're receiving a signal asking for green circuits from above. Uh, 200 times 500. A hundred thousand. That is at least seven green circuits. But they won't start loading them until... I might just switch off the auto launch for now. Um, they won't start loading them until we get the... The space capsules. Where are they? I mean, we've got the capsules. I meant the cargo rocket sections. We seem to be stalled on cargo rocket sections. We have no rocket control units. That's all that's missing. Rocket control units are missing... Batteries? Batteries? Uh... Oh. Okay, what are batteries missing here? Sulfuric acid. But also there's actually a train trying to deliver them. Um, but they've got that little bit of logic missing that I added later on. So we're going to read stopped train as T. And there has to be no t, no t detected for us to push uh, batteries into... The bulk rail loader for the first cargo wagon, in case it's a short train picking this up. Alright, what about sulfuric acid? What's the problem there? Sulfur? Petroleum, again. Uh, we are way overdue to add another... We did add another rail block. We must have chased a squirrel uh, before we added water to this thing. That's unfortunate. Alright, uh, I think... What's the max rate of water here? Oh, that's per minute. Okay, 440 is not very much. Uh, we're not doing sulfur in this rail block or anything. So, I'll just put our uh, offshore pump here. I wish we could cue the edge of the water with the pipette tool to pick that up. Uh, that's a lot of pipe sections, but 440 is really... Like, the more pipe sections it has to go through, the slower it's going to be. But uh, 440 water per second is really not that much. And that's only if it's doing literally all of the cracking simultaneously. And the cracking only needs a third of a pipe per recipe as well. 
Uh, a third of a section of pipe, that is. Alright, that's going to give us at least seven more petroleum per second. Uh, let's see. Production. Fluids. Petroleum. Petroleum gas. It's climbing. I mean, I would probably expect it to not to double because we're producing petroleum on uh, Granis. So maybe go up by like a third, which is actually doubling it on this planet. Okay, and that is... Okay, it didn't improve sulfur that quickly. We just happened to get a petroleum delivery here. There's no way that this thing that I just hooked up um, already has our sulfur flowing at a much greater speed. Um, but yeah. Maybe I should prioritize sulfuric acid. There's a lot... I don't know. Let's look at what's dependent directly on these things. Explosives, prod modules, heat shielding. We kind of like heat shielding. But it's not generally that urgent that we need heat shielding. Um, yeah, whereas sulfuric acid. Batteries, other batteries, blue chips, blue tech cards. Uh, every kind of enriched. What's that? Cryonite slush? That's for making ice. Beads, iridite. Mining uranium. Yeah, I think we actually should probably prioritize uh, sulfuric acid in hindsight. So now we've, now we've doubled our oil. Uh, maybe I should add even more oil blocks? I don't know. We've got like... I don't even know how many blocks we've got now, but like, it feels overkill to need more than two blocks to process oil. Um, and that's not counting this as a block for sulfur and sulfuric acid. Uh, considering the size of our base, I would imagine that these two blocks are probably... Uh, probably enough. But the fact is we're playing catch-up. There should be a train to pick up. Yep, there it is. Right on time. Uh, to make more... S that's for making plastic, actually. Maybe I should prioritize sulfur? Over plastic? Sulfuric acid? For the exact same reasons that I was just going over? What does plastic go into? LDS, railgun, Tesla... Uh, electronic components are kind of important, but, like, the sulfur is kind of more urgent, I guess? It can be. Oh. Yeah, no. Uh, T equals zero. Do not push this to this when there's a train picking up items. Okay. I guess technically I could probably just... No, I couldn't. I'm pretty sure if you connect the uh, logistic train stop to the output, it'll get upset. Or maybe it's if you link the output to the input. Nope. Yeah, it does get upset if it's on the same circuit wire. Uh, the red means it's not going to work. And now it's taking a disturbingly long time to update. I should probably look into the mod settings for LTN. It might be time to tweak... Uh, what is it called? The... Update frequency? 
Higher numbers improve performance by spreading out updates over more ticks. When set greater than one, forces updates per tick to one. Number of stops and requests updated per tick. Oh, so we have we do have it set slow at the moment. Update frequency. Okay, so we we do this many updates after this many ticks, if I'm reading that right. Um, I remember setting this, like, significantly higher than I thought was sensible for, like, UPS last time, and it actually had shockingly little uh, impact on UPS. And then we got nice responsive LTN scheduling. Which we get from the start uh, anyway, but once you get a big enough base, uh, things start to slow down a bit. Okay. Fantastic. Um, that's 21k petroleum right there. That's 32. I'd love to see more sulfuric acid in... We actually just need a little bit to trigger another delivery here. Um, we did send batteries over here. It's 5 per rocket control unit. Stack size is 200 versus 10 though. So one train load of batteries. We're actually about to run out of that one train load of batteries that I sent. Okay, that's not quite right. We've gone through like half a train load or less. That's good. All right, so rocket control units are well and truly in motion. They are, of course, rather slow. 1.2 per second. Um, hmm. 72 per minute. It's 400. It's 800 for a train. So, like, 11, 12 minutes before we get RCUs up here. Luckily, we've already got them. Not so luckily, we need more, like quite a bit more, before packed cargo rocket sections are going to be delivered here. I'm just going to pick some up manually. We literally only need 20. I might get some from the mall if I have to. It's down this way. Uh, that's 18. Nineteen? Nineteen and two-fifths? Alright, that's twenty. Let's drop that off at our new auto resupply thing. And then it can start loading up green circuits. First, it'll have to unpack them. Alright, so capsule check, liquid rocket fuel check, cargo rocket sections check. Uh, only 16k electronic circuits because I don't want to store all of the stuff here all of the time. But the train should be able to keep up. Oh, right. Did you stop? unloading for the moment. Uh, the train can probably keep up with this one stack inserter loading things in actually. But I would like to hurry it up anyway. Why is it picking up 8.8k? I guess that's yeah, that's what I was worried about before. If we're going to have a request stack threshold that's smaller than the entire train, we can't just decide that, like, these two things are going to be a full short train and the other things are going to be um, a full long train. That's not how that 
not how LTN works on the same station. Not unless you use like a timer to cycle uh, different settings. So like if you want a different set of LTN settings for different resources, you could cycle it on a timer and LTN just has to catch it at a certain time in order to uh, in order to happen to respond to that request in particular. We've almost got our cargo rocket sections in. Just one more. Just one more to unpack and then the bots will start loading this automatically. But I'd like to speed it up a bit. Did we not? Oh, I set that to negative. Force of habit from uh, LTN. This thing would have taken out all of the green circuits. Whoops. Alright, cool. Now then, how is orbit looking for scaffolding? Oh, I forgot. Oh yeah, we didn't make any more requester chests yet, because we don't have the green circuits. Obviously. Alright, let me give it a hand. Meet all of the green circuits. Hmm. There's a couple of tricks I have, but it's a little bit more difficult in this circumstance to use to force uh, even distribution to quickly load a very large number of things from one chest into another. Uh, where's my even distro? There, we, there it is. I wanted to remember to change this back. Uh, 0.3 settings? I can't actually type that, but I can change it with the, uh, the slider there. Alright. I really don't want to waste a cargo rocket. So I kind of want this to be full before we send it, but maybe, maybe I'll just send some miscellaneous other stuff like the, uh, like the chests that they don't have right now. Rainbow chests. Could probably maybe do with some more inserters. Nope, we've got plenty of inserters up there. Requester chest is here. Buffer chests, why not? And this thing's trying to remove those because they're not on the list. Working as intended, but not what I want right this second. Uh, anything else I want to send up there while we're at it? We already got the solar panels, I think. Yeah, we've got 3k solar panels. Speaking of which... Hmm, I'd really like to have that bit of scaffolding in particular already placed. So we can place our next uh, substation. What? Really? Come on. Come on now. Now they're just teasing. Alright. 
Solar panels. Uh, we need like this many before we can run the signal transmitter. Unfortunately, we can't put efficiency modules in the signal transmitter. That would make it a lot easier. 80% easier to be precise. Okay. Uh, I do want to send an entire... Uh, close enough. What else are we sending up there? Combinators? We've got plenty of combinators. Uh, don't really need more bots. Make all this other stuff easily. Yeah, there isn't really any th little thing I can think of. Oh, what about delivery cannon chests? We have zero. Let's go. Take a stack of those. Fantastic. And we're full. Alright. Launch on cargo full. And then we'll set this up to work off of the signal receiver from now on. But that is a whole cargo rocket of mostly green circuits. Uh, not only will that get science moving again for now, but... Well, I think it'll get science moving again. Uh... More to the point, we can make some requester chests, manufacture space platforms, expand our solar at a decent rate. Let's pick a dollies this over here. Cram one more in. I think I can actually, yeah, I can actually drop those on the ground remotely. That works. Alright, decon that. And automatic scaffolding go. How much power do we have? Not quite enough with the speed modules. And the bots all in motion at the same time. But that is why we are making scaffolding at this moment. Actually goes here. And science go burr again. Fantastic. Alright, so we just need to calculate 500 stacks for each of these. And I'll have to put these barrels... Well, I could either put these barrels directly into the rail network, which I think is terrible, actually. Or I could have uh, trains drop off fluids to... Hmm. We've already got one fluid drop off here. If I hadn't used up this space, I could fit uh, two more different fluid drop-offs pretty easily. I could still do that. So if we have... Can't fit that there. We're going to have to use the smaller um, storage tanks. Let's see. Where's the mole? Whoops. Uh, just for the moment, we'll go... Here it is. Large storage tank. On the way 40. Fantastic. And... 
Unfortunately, I can't connect these like so. So it's going to be a little bit ugly, I think. How many fluids are we sending up? Petroleum and heavy oil. Petroleum is way slower. So I think we'll do heavy oil like this so that the train can output quickly. And heavy oil... Is going to be a little bit slower. Since it has to go through these pipes. And then we need... Uh, We're already going to be delivering steel here, right? Yeah. So I guess we'll make barrels on the spot. Um, this is going to be heavy oil. Uh, fill heavy oil barrel. Make it two, why not? Can I fit undergrounds all the way down here? I actually can. That's surprisingly good. Uh, this was petroleum. Fill petroleum barrel. And we'll need to make steel barrels. Unless we want to put those in the train network, which we definitely don't. Okay. So, I'll make those here. I don't have any requested chests on me. I sent them all upstairs. And I didn't give the bots time. Oh, we, we could just make it. Alright. Steel barrel. Uh, half of them are going to go... Well, some of them are going to go straight in here. The rest are going to... be made available for... these ones. And I think I'll do it this way. 112, oddly specific. Um, 50 should be more than enough. Oh, okay. And then... A couple of passive providers. We don't really need to accumulate 500 oil barrels, I don't think. Muted? Yeah, you got me. Muted. Uh, I was just saying, we're already delivering steel here, therefore we're going to make barrels on the spot. Um, petroleum's going to be slower, so these pipes... Uh, we're going to have the slower throughput of unloading petroleum this way straight into the large storage tanks for heavy oil, which is going to be much higher throughput overall. Uh, we've got request for steel barrels. Uh, we're not going to store like 500 heavy oil barrels. We're not going to need to do that. And as for LTN with multi-fluids, we just have to look for a negative one signal for whatever fluid we're trying to empty the train of. Uh, speaking of fluids, uh, let's see, heavy oil, and oh, 
Request thresholds 50k, perfect. And then petroleum. I think it's going to take a while before we get a petroleum delivery. There's storage enough for two train loads of uh, of fluid between these tanks. So I've requested one and a half. So when we're down to 25k, it'll request another train for whichever fluid. And we're about to see our... Is this working? Yeah, it is. It's already, it's already loaded. It's just waiting on some traffic. Traffic jams sort them out, uh, sort themselves out a lot more quickly and efficiently with these rail blocks than last time with the trains that were twice as long. All right, so let's just confirm this works. Beautiful, heavy oil going where heavy oil belongs. Uh, let's get steel delivered. I want two train loads, so sixteen. Okay. And that should already be scheduled, I imagine. Yep, there it is. LTN being a lot more responsive now. Uh, it's going to be a minute before we get more cargo a rocket sections. Oh, wow. No, it's not. I mean, it's not going to be that long. Once again, we're waiting on rocket control units. How fast do those get consumed here? That's per minute, okay. Two per second though is actually relatively fast. We're only making 1.2 second uh, per second in this block. I guess I could double it, but we were bottlenecking on resources, at least temporarily. I think that was because of ultimately petroleum because we didn't have the sulfuric acid for batteries. We're still... we're still slow on batteries at the moment. Because of sulfuric acid. It's draining the last literally 2.3 sulfuric acid out of this tank right now. Alright. Our new oil is operating at full speed all the time. Maybe I do need more oil blocks. Okay. So, where are we up to? There's our steel, there's our barrels. Uh, we do need to put these barrels into the robot network. Fantastic. We're not going to get petroleum delivered here for a little while. Oh, that might be it actually. Nope, that's going to sulfur. I'm not surprised. Is sulfur prioritized? It's not. It just happened to get that delivery. I don't really need petroleum here for a while, though. I think I will set sulfuric acid as a higher priority. And same goes for... Well, we're already prioritizing sulfuric acid. It goes through iron incredibly slowly. Uh, for what it is, but I'll still prioritize that as well. Okay, cool. Oh, did I click the wrong thing here? Input priority. That's the exact opposite of what I needed. Alright, output priority, sulfuric acid. It does still let a little bit of sulfur through, weirdly enough. Just depending on the timing. I can live with that. That's fine. Hmm. 
Okay, so when are we going to get our cargo rocket sections? Should I force it to hurry up? Probably. I think we should probably have some in the mall. We have 297 just lying around. Okay. Good morning, Yatuwatu. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, why don't we grab these copious cargo rocket sections that we've got? Wait, are we packing them here? Uh, we're not. We need to pack some. Okay. We, we, because cargo rocket sections are going to find their way back here. We need to make them available to the other blocks. Uh, where am I going to fit this? How about over here? So this is packing... Oh, that's unpacking. And this will be packing. No, wait. I, I got it backwards. This is... This is unpacking. And this is packing. Okay, cool. Packing, unpacking. Let's rethink this from scratch. We need... Uh, packed cargo rocket sections here. And... Regular cargo rocket sections here. We need to input, and we need to control those inputs based on the robot network. Let's just grab that information over this way. Uh, we're going to have, say, filtered storage chests, I think. Heavy oil train will never leave. Uh, why not? Empty cargo. What the hell? Oh, I know what happened. Oh no. Basic mistake with LTN. Uh, I forgot to tell LTN how much we've got. Okay. Let's fix that real quick. I'll just have to add some extra storage. Or heavy oil, at least for a little while. Rookie mistake. Nah, it happens all the time. It's it's really easy to miss in the checklist. Especially considering I didn't even have a green wire me measuring anything except for the huge storage tank. Not counting the robot network. As soon as this train is empty, I want to put a pump up here. Okay. Pump goes this way. And we'll come back and remove that later. Now then. Before we forget, let's finish... Controlling our packed and unpacked sections. And... Regular... Wait, this is... Yeah, this is unpacking. Regular cargo rocket sections. Okay, so we want, uh, we want 40 or so, uh, packed cargo rocket sections at all times. And we want a bunch of unpacked ones available for this cargo rocket as well. I think I would just like to aim for like 48 in each chest. I should probably prioritize the packed ones though. Oh, I forgot. We don't actually need circuit wire to check what's in the logistic network either. Okay, so... 
if packed if packed cargo rocket section less than 96 go ahead and do that and if cargo rocket section Less than 96. Go ahead and unpack. So currently we have 230 regular cargo rocket sections and nowhere near as many packed. That is taking one whole cargo rocket section away or packed cargo rocket section. Um, I might have to set the provide stack threshold a little bit higher here. Let's say at least 10. Maybe it would be... Hmm. In this circumstance, it would actually be a little bit better if LTN was a little bit slower to respond. Because we would... Pack more cargo rocket sections before it actually schedules a trip. And then we would be asking for like 20 of these instead of 10. Hmm. I could just not offer cargo rocket sections here. And have a dedicated pickup for them somewhere, somehow. I could actually use this stop because it's only being used for fluid. As a dual purpose. So it's going to offer cargo rocket sections. Um, to LTN. One item per train. That's what LTN is for. Uh, the thing is, with this stop, I want to be able to pick up, like... 50 construction bots, for example, um, so that we can automatically get, or well, 50 logistic bots, for example, so that we could all automatically get something like this working without having to seed it ourselves. So that's why I want the, um, I could just, hmm, I could just not use stacks. Provide threshold. Say... 40? And that probably works out pretty well. But some things we're not going to 40, like uh, cargo landing pads and such. Well... That's... A little bit annoying. Let's go... Provide threshold 10. We're more or less back where we started. I could blacklist uh, packed cargo rocket sections from this thing and have a dedicated pickup for those over here. I might even end up doing that. Although, as expected, um... oh, we've only got eight. I was going to say it seems like we're starting to catch up. So there's not so many trains rushing over to pick up this stuff. There's no cargo rocket sections here. Wait, why aren't there any cargo rocket sections here? Packed cargo rocket section, negative 40... Request stack threshold 40. Hmm. Act. No. Curiouser and curiouser.
The request stack threshold is how many needs to be missing before we make a request. Oh. Oh, are these going around in circles? They are. Okay. Yeah, I kind of thought they would. But wait, we've got 98 cargo rocket sections. Oh, we're aiming for 96? Okay, that's kind of dumb. Um... Why don't we just aim for one? Because it'll get put into... I could aim for just, like, a few cargo rocket sections. Because it'll get put in here immediately. When it's needed. Is that a loop with the pack run pack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to set these to be mutually exclusive. And yet... I want to make sure there's always... A minimum number... of cargo rocket sections available. Hmm. As long as there's a packed cargo rocket section in here, there's always effectively a few cargo rocket sections available. And that's not going to be detected by the logic network, uh, logistic network. So I think this is actually it. Um, we'll have buffer chests here for the... whoops. Buffer chest here for the pact. Whenever we've got... oh no. Uh, I should set... I should set these two to opposites. So this has to be greater than... let's say 10. That should stop the loop. Alright, so what do we have? Cargo... Packed cargo rocket sections 11. Cargo rocket sections 1. If we need to start loading up cargo rocket sections in this thing, we're going to drop to 0. And this will immediately... Output. And we've got the... We've got the packed ones right here. I'd like to have a bit of a bigger buffer, though. Oh no, indeed. Hmm. I'd like to keep just enough cargo rocket sections in this block. Oh wait, I know how to do that. Yeah, we're already doing that. Um, this is only half of a cargo... a cargo rocket only. But this pretty much gets the job done in combination with this. Yeah, I think that'll probably do it. Did we get cargo rocket sections down here? We did. Fantastic. Oh, they're in here. Cool, cool, cool. Just what I want to see. I should probably make that one a buffer, though, just so that it doesn't... Ah, oh, this is fine, actually. It'll request a few more cargo rocket sections, I don't care. Then again, why don't we keep them there? Okay, where are we going? Here? Buffer chest for the pact. All go here, and the logistic network knows how many we have. Okay. So now we place more solar panels. Now we place more scaffolding. Uh, probably shouldn't have. It's fine. It seems like we already have that much scaffolding. How much power do we have spare now? Not 
as much as I would like, but that's with the bots still in motion. I don't care if power dips a bit when the bots are going crazy. Oh, we're also spamming 1.28 megawatts each with these three uh, to make scaffolding fast. We don't need to do that in the long run. In fact, let's fix that right now. Pair of efficiency ones. I said a pair of efficiency ones. There we go. Wait, I said two. How dare you? Did I not click this? I could have sworn I clicked this. There we go. Alright, so how's our power look for the moment? Uh, there's like... Usually 10 megawatts to spare. That's what we're looking for. And there'll certainly be 10 megawatts after this. I probably shouldn't have removed that. Okay. About there. Did we run out of scaffolding? We did not. We need another robopod up here somewhere. Where's our nearest one? Surprisingly far away. Scaffolding is expensive? A little bit. One heat shield, one LDS, and one steel plate for just one tile. Yeah. It's a little spancy. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fantastic. All right, that should be way more than enough. Because of heat shielding? How much goes into heat shielding? I've never really had trouble with heat shielding. Lots of stone tablet, two steel, eight sulfur. Okay, the eight sulfur is a bit, a little bit nasty. But we don't tend to need heat shielding in the greatest of quantities. But scaffolding, though, we will be needing that in pretty, pretty large quantities. So there's that. Okay, we've definitely got 10 megawatts to spare now. So let's get our signal transmitter working. And we're looking for... We need a positive number for how much we want. Right, this isn't connected. Okay. A heavy oil barrel. Stack size 10. Uh, so 5,000. And this is not LTN, we're setting positive numbers for requests. And 500 times 50. 25,000 sulfur. Uh, water ice is 200. 100k. That's the same for all the circuits here. 50k for blue. Uh, 25k for heat shield LDS. 25k for small electric motor. 50k for the plates. 50k for... These ones, 100k, uh, 25k, and 50k. Fantastic. So, 
those are all the things we're going to be attempting to load into this rocket. It would be really nice if I could pass those signals to LTN for what we want delivered. But again, the stack size is being different. Unless I unless I add an absolutely enormous amount of storage here. Let's see. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. We need 8,000 stacks. One by one chests are the most efficient for space. We need 167 chests to store, uh, to store all of that here at once. I don't particularly want to do that. We're just going to ask for a couple of train loads, if that, um, of each resource. What did I say? Um... 16. 16 times 80? 1280 stacks. Uh, we need 27 chests to store that. We've got 35. Okay, cool. Is the energy consumption of the signal transmitter constant, or does it depend on the distance? It's just constant. 10 megawatt just to transmit something from in orbit to the ground. It's a little bit much, but it'll transmit any distance for 10 megawatt. All right, so I need to convert these to uh, two train loads as a negative for numbers. Wait, that should be... Oh, I think I went... Hold on. Steel plate... Is 16k. Yeah, no, that's right. So this should be 32k. For a second I thought I asked for too much of these other ones. Uh, 32, 25k, wait, that's not right, uh, this should be 8,000, I was thinking of the 25k I figured out from upstairs, that's 16, and that's 8k. All right, that should be everything. Oh, wait, stone. And solid rocket fuel is 80 times 10 times two, 1600. Okay, now what are we trying to load into the rocket right now? All of this, <laughs> a lot of ice for starters. We've got a little bit of ice up there, and it's going to last a long time, so that's kind of the last thing we need. But at the same time... Oh, wait, wait, wait. I've got an idea. Uh, I'm sure ice is probably being sent already, but I totally forgot we've got a rocket full of... Well, we do have a rocket full of ice here. I just have to put that cargo... Uh, that space capsule in place. Could you just halve the signals for LTN to save storage? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm setting them to a couple of train loads each. Wait, what? Oh. Wait, wait, what? Oh, we've got the... There's no room to put in the space capsule, that's the problem. Let me turn this around for a sec. It needs the one inventory slot here, so that can disappear and go there. All right, we are gonna launch this, not to Granis this time, but to Hagen Orbit. Probably lost a bunch of liquid rocket fuel just now. 
And then I'm going to set it back to Grannis. Uh, ice. Launch on cargo full. Fantastic. And let me just fix the naming convention here as well. Water ice. God damn it. There we go. And on this side, it is ice. Grannis ice launch on cargo full. Um, I haven't actually got space capsules being supplied here automatically. I'll have to fix that. But that is our ice in orbit, which means we're no longer trying to load 50k ice. Well, we are actually, because the bots haven't taken it out of the, um, the cargo landing pad yet. Um, but as they take it out of the cargo landing pad, the demand for ice here is going to decrease. Once they stop putting it in a requester chest that doesn't report to the logistic network, actually. All right, so right about now, we're going to start to see that number decrease. 98k ice. So it's going to try to load a little bit of ice. Do we have? Do we not have a train delivering ice? I guess not. Wait, we've got how many trains coming here? Oh wow, all of them, I think. That's that's a lot of train. I think you need more storage in space. Oh, I did send up storage chests. Um, I haven't placed them yet. You're absolutely right. Uh, the bots don't know how to prioritize, of course. Let's remove those tile ghosts for the moment. Oh, we're actually low on scaffolding here. That's okay. The chests are one by one. So we can place them the moment that a tile is placed. Um, the other thing I'd like to do... is connect the cargo landing pad to here. So that we know what's in the cargo landing pad. So we don't have to wait for it to empty before our requests for ice drop. So now we're only looking for like 3.4k. Much better. Fantastic. So I think that is... I think that's orbital science completely automatically supplied. Uh, it is the resupply for it is experiencing quite the rush right now because we literally told it to supply everything at once. Uh, so like 20... What was it? 16... We, we literally sh scheduled like 32 trains worth of stuff at about the same time to come here. Um, so it's going to take a minute to catch up. Let's see. Planet orbit. Easy science resupply. Put that here. Fantastic. And then, in theory, we shouldn't have to touch anything to get uh, every single research that includes all of their tech cards up to, uh, but not including production science packs done. We don't actually have automatic resupply of tech cards, we've just got a 
stash of them. Uh, let's see, 12k rocket tech cards, 4.6 blue. Um, the lowest one is 4.2k green tech cards. So we can do any 4,000 research we feel like. Uh, I haven't gone back to Nalvis in a minute, but we've also got an awful lot. I could probably remotely set this up, actually. We need a space capsule. Hmm. Where are we? There's a space capsule right here, actually. I think I can remote control this to add this cargo rocket to fully automatically um, resupply the tech cards as well. And that should last quite a long time before it runs into some kind of problem. Let's put a signal receiver right about here. And just make sure there's at least one space capsule available for the robot network. That needs to be a request chest. I don't think we've got anything to manuf... Oh, we've got an autocrafter. Hell yes. Hell yes. Time to make some fancy chests. Uh, I should probably actually make sure the request happens first. So once that updates, there we go. Okay. So that is a requester. Uh, it looks like these two are set up nicely. Bot should be on its way already. Here it, here it comes. Fantastic. Cargo. Oh, sorry. Space capsule. Space capsule one. And then... I don't believe we have any signal transmitters or receivers. Let's fix those as well. Actually, stacks to 20. Well, you know what? We only need literally, like, one. I think it's going to do all the chests first, though. That's fine and all, but I want to be able to edit this. I guess it's literally just the wire connection, so I can go ahead and... There's two ways I could do this. There's the lazy way and the good way. The good way is I use a constant combinator with big negative numbers um, for all of the signals that we want to ignore from the signal receiver. Uh, the lazy way is I just use four decider combinators. Uh, where am I going to put this? Decider Combinator... Or well, actually, I could use Arithmetic. Either way. I could wait until a certain tech card gets below a certain level. But it's fine. Bots are on the way, I hope. They are. So what we're going to say is if whichever type of science is, well, we're just going to pass on that number. And, and we're going to add, hmm, actually...
Yeah, I think I will. Just so I only need one uh, signal transmitter. What I'm going to do is put tech cards here. Um, what's a fifth of a cargo rocket? No, we're just going to do a whole cargo rocket. So stack size 200 is 100k. So we're going to request all of these tech cards. And now that I think of it, I only saw four belts. I think. Yeah. We don't have yellow tech... But here they are. Oh, there's, there's five. Just doesn't belt to the exact same spot. Alright, cool. So we're going to request 100k of each type of tech card on the Hagen end. I'm just going to put negative a million so that we ignore them. Uh, where do I put down here? Oh, I need to go there. We don't have any builders in range right now. Alright. So we're going to do negative a million. Or I could just say negative 100k. But this is fine. Negative a million for each of those tech cards. Right before a decider combinator that says each greater than zero. I'll put each. That's effectively going to remove those signals from what's coming in on the signal receiver. Uh, and then... So this end isn't going to try to load the tech cards, and we're going to do something similar on Nalvis. But just because it's a little bit easier... We are doing this logic here. What we've got is subtracted from what we're asking for. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, let's see. This is going to be tech card number one. Tech card number two. Tech card number three. And so on. Again, I could do this better, but I'm being lazy. Does this reach all the way across? I think it... I think it won't, actually. Surprise storage looks full on resupply rocket? Does it? Oh. Could have sworn we did the math. Wait a sec. No, we're definitely reading from the robot network for what we how much we've got. Hmm. How much do we have here? 32k, 26k. Hmm. I'm not sure. Let's see. We're aiming for two train loads of each, right? One, two, uh, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, two, four, six, eight, twenty-eight, thirty, thirty-two train loads. Thirty-two times eighty? Twenty-five, sixty stacks. I feel like I got half that number before. Uh, divided by 48 chests is 53, 
storage chests. We have 35. Okay. Let's add a few more storage chests. I want to keep them close, though. This is getting a little cramped. Because I don't want the bots have to have to travel very far. That's 52. We need like one or two more. There we go. Okay. So back on Nalvis. We still don't have a signal receiver. Why is that? We're trying to make chests. Get out of here. Wait, why aren't we able to make chests? There's no steel plate. Uh-oh. Steel plate is missing coke. There's no coal. That's why the trains ran out of fuel. Uh, so we're really just going to be going off of the backlog of science from here. Can we at least make the signal receiver, I hope? We're missing steel plate. Okay. Is there any possibility of... There is a... There's some coal right here. Not a whole lot, but we can tap that. Um, there's actually a bit of steel here as well. There's like one, literally exactly 1,000 steel that we can break into. Alright, let's get another RoboPod over here. And then... You know what? I don't even want the transmitter. Just hurry up and get the signal receiver. Here comes the steel. There's probably some steel in a container I could have gotten as well. Yep, there's a hundred. Alright, so that's our signal receiver. Fantastic. Uh, can this reach across? Of course not. Is it okay if it connects to this? It definitely is. No, it's going to read the contents as well. Alright, let's get a, like a medium pole here or something. And we're just going to pass these signals over to here. Oh look, wait, come to think of it, I didn't need any of this because we're not doing... We're, we're doing belt connections for each individual uh, resource type. So we're just going to say, if we're still looking for green tech cards, we're putting in more green tech cards. It's going to be a bit imprecise, but I'm okay with that. Alright, if rocket tech card greater than zero, if blue tech card greater than zero, if green tech card greater than zero. Maybe I should... Maybe I should read from... I, I should probably subtract what's already in the cargo rocket. Before we use that logic. And... 
military tech card greater than zero. Fantastic. All right. Uh, arithmetic combinator goes here somewhere. And we're just going to say each times negative one output each. So whatever, whatever science is asking for, minus what's already in the rocket, uh, if that is greater than zero for that particular type of thing, we are allowing it to go into the cargo rocket. And this is already pointed. No, it's not. Hagen Orbit. Uh, Hagen Orbit landing pad. Launch trigger cargo full. And that should be it. Let's go. So however much, however much science we're going to manage to make before things break down because we don't have steel uh, is approximately how much we'll send automatically. We've also got some coal here, so I could probably extend the life of this a bit longer. Let's see, coal is supposed to be on that belt, I believe. It's been a, it's been a while. Um, I'm definitely feeling how old this playthrough is, just looking back at all of this. That kind of looks like there's coal under there, but there isn't. There's a little scrap of coal here as well. Uh, but yeah, if we can just extend the robo-network down this way a bit. Give it some power. Uh, that's not going to have range. That'll do. Actually, it probably would have, because it starts with an initial charge that's just sort of free. Alright, and then we're going to... to do what? Put a passive provider chest right there. Uh, and probably actually make it an active provider. I hope we made some active providers. We did not. I can arrange that. Active provider is probably going to be the highest priority. Oh, uh, right after passive, actually. Oh yeah, media defense ammo. That's a little bit important. We've got plenty still. Stop, stop taking our steel. What little steel we have before we fix this. Oh wow, that looks cool. Look at that. Look at this pattern. Just... It, there's a little exception here, but other than that we've got straight... Uh, straight columns of the different science colors. That is so cool. Rainbow rocket. Okay. 
we get an active provider chests. I should probably drop the quest on this one a bit lower. There we go. Active provider chests. And we're going to get... Uh, we're going to get our coal from here. All 47k of it. And we're going to request... Coal... Uh, I'll make this a buffer chest. No, we need coal up here. Actually. Alright, so I'll put a request... Uh, right about here. Does this... That feeds the trains. No, that just feeds this train. That's fine. Uh, let's go with... A loader. And... Coal. And take from buffer chests. And it's not... Wait, what? We have a hundred logistic parts. Okay, cool. Uh, it's going to take them a minute. Before they actually bring that over. There we go. On the way, 56. So that's going to give a coke, which is going to give a steel, which is going to keep this whole thing going for a while. And we actually did get a whole cargo rocket. Um, do we really need to launch more? Yeah, it's actually part of rocket science. Rocket tech cards. So that's a yes. Um, I think I will launch this one... There's no reason, actually, to launch this one prematurely. Because we've still got... Uh, five types of tech card here. So if it comes to that, I'll launch that automatically. I mean, manually. But uh, for now, that is... There's no copper. Can we force copper to hurry up? It's trying to do glass and stuff first. I could do copper from the mall. Copper plate. How much copper is here? 20k. Oh, let me just drop these off while I'm here. still need more storage? Really? Okay. No matter how much I math it, it doesn't seem to work out. Don't tell me it's just because of the 40 space capsules. It could be the case. Whatever, I, I'd rather make too many now then not have enough. Okay. So, we're waiting on filling this up with copper plate to just... It's already, like, automated that this will get sorted out, but I, would, I just want to hurry things up a little bit. Uh, but for now... We're going to do some vulcanite processing. So we've already got the first step, which gives us a vulcanite, enriched vulcanite, and crushed vulcanite. 
with enriched vulcanite, we can make iridium blast cake. Uh, won't be doing that for a minute. Iridium powder stack size 30. Whoops. Huh. Comes back as powder here. Interesting. Um, but yeah. Does it literally only go to Iridium Blast Cake? I was already thinking we would just bring the Enriched Vulcanite to the Iridium Powder in whichever block that makes it. It's only made as a byproduct. And then not very much. Interesting. Wait, so that, that means Blast Cake is not available all that much. What does it go into? Iridium ingot? Is it needed to make iridium ingots? Going down a rabbit hole here. Iridium ingot... Uh, it is. Huh. So unless FNEI is somehow bugged or something... The only way we get Iridium Powder... Oh, there's a recipe specifically for Iridium Powder. Okay, never mind. But it's got a lot of recycling involved. 2 times 50% Iridium Powder? Doesn't that just mean 1 Iridium Powder? Bruh. Beads, crushed iridite, hydrogen chloride, nitric acid gives us... Two of the inputs come back. Dirty iridium water and iridium powder. Okay, good to know. Anyway, let's get back on topic. Uh, we need... I just wanted to see the other options for this, though. Enriched vulcanite... Is kind of like cover X, only not. And we can turn it into vulcanite block, and that's basically it. Okay. So I probably want a block just for enriching. And crushed vulcanite, probably about the same, I imagine. Enriched vulcanite block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we're doing enriched vulcanite. Uh, let's see. What are our inputs and outputs? Sulfur, crushed, and vulcanite. Enriched vulcanite. Those are the only inputs from the rail block. Uh, from the rail network. And I was muted. Or at least a little bit. Iridium processing is cover X all the way down, indeed. Okay, uh, so first of all, I'm going to start with the layout. We want preferably, but it's not strictly necessary. Although, it's all just one process, right? So, yeah, we definitely want it to be beacon upgradable. If we can. I imagine it's going to be very slow.
So maybe something like this. Uh, with the... Six regular beacons before we have speed... Uh, big beacons. Probably have to make that a bit wider apart. What's the rate for any one of these? Extremely slow, as expected. I could do a sushi belt. Um, but I'd like to be able to have chests in between to swap to swap items back and forth if I can. For the recycled stuff. Uh, it would have to be a bigger chest though. Because we want both input and output. Well, I could do small chests like this. But then I'd need one per machine. Or I could do like four buys to share between a, uh, uh, two pair. But that's getting a bit wide. Not that wide, I guess. I think I like this more. And then... We could just do... I wouldn't have room for the long arm as well to take from both of these belts. Oh, we could do the inputs like this side. Yeah, I think I like that. Okay, so far so good. And then... Something like that. Maybe we could make it a bit more symmetrical. But you get the idea. And then we just have to output sand always. And... We need to decide when to output enriched vulcanite, right? Let's look at the recipe. Ten crushed goes in, four crushed comes out. So it's like always net negative on crushed vulcanite. Net positive on enriched. I think I should have stackies in the middle. At least for taking from... Yeah, let's let's use stack inserters. Could you just remove sand from the chest? Uh yes, but it wouldn't be as compact, I don't think. So these need to be filter inserters. I want a white list of sand at all times. And I would also like to set a white... Hmm, I'm going to have to have some combinator space on the outside if it's going to be this compact. Uh, I would like it to also add a white list for enriched vulcanite if we get... Uh, if we get a certain amount of enriched vulcanite in here, which is probably not much. So, like, we don't want it to output crushed vulcanite at all. Uh, 
refreshed. Vulcanite, negative one million. And, oh, this is easy, actually. Uh, enriched Vulcanite, say negative 50. So once there's 50 enriched Vulcanite in this chest, these two machines will happily output it. We're going to... We're going to do red wire to all of these filter inserters and green wire to the local chest. Um, so that's going to be set filters blacklist. Wait, is that right? Set filters whitelist. Uh, and send is always... Always output. Auto save. Yeah, I think that's right. And then... That's going to connect like so. I think that's it. Uh, let's get some power and test this theory, shall we? Okay. So our three inputs are crushed, enriched, and sulfur. Crushed, enriched, and sulfur. down here we'll just put actually I don't want to void it just yet I want to see what comes out so this is a hundred percent no it's not twenty percent sand Exactly flip that. Oh, I made this mistake again with the wide area beacon. Well, I'm not going to worry about that right this second. I'm more interested in how this works and it looks like it works very well um, the moment that there's some um, crushed vulcanite in here it gets picked up by the other machine so once we reach 50 enriched vulcanite in this chest uh, it should allow outputting Enrich Vulcanite to the belt. And there it is. Neat as you please. We can, uh, we definitely have room to stretch this out a bit, so the beacon shouldn't be a problem. I think. And then 
I guess we don't need that crisscross pattern. Let's do it like this. A more consistent look. Cool, I like that. Let's put this over here. It's actually just barely not crossing into the next block already. Or the next half a block, I should say. And then... Because we've got three physical inputs... Gonna need some organizing shenanigans here. How slow is this? It is real slow. Uh, it's not that slow. Oh wait, this is yeah, forty-eight and four point eight. It's a lot faster on the crushed vulcanite. Not surprising. Alright, let's do it like this. And like this. And then... One, two, three... F uh, the belt speed is going to be slow as hell, right? For the whole thing, it's just over one blue belt of crushed vulcanite. Just over half a blue belt of this side. Sulfur and enriched vulcanite are really slow. So why don't we put... Why don't we do something like this? Um, that's kind of backward, but you get the idea. Okay. So we're going to go with... Uh, one red belt, crushed vulcanite, that we can split. Or we could just do a pair of fast loaders for that here. But with this layout, we can't quite... I might have to do a bigger chest, just so that we have room. Hmm. Hmm. Can we not squeeze this in elegantly somehow? How about... Crushed Vulcanite this way. And now there's not going to be room. do these two hmm I might have to move this thing down a bit I would prefer not to have to do that surely I've done this kind of thing in a smaller space before the other inserter should be filtered too, or they put sand in the chest. Uh, good point. Let's do... 
blacklist sand. Or I could do whitelist just because it's easier to see what's going on here. Yeah, I, I think I like that a little bit better. Alright, so one, two, three, four. I actually don't know how we didn't end up with any sand in this chest yet. Does it like favor the one with the whitelist out of all the inserters pointing at this machine? I feel like we should have gotten accidental sand in one of these chests. Didn't happen so far. That would be my next question. Yeah. Very interesting. I almost want to leave the stack inserters. Just to, like, prove it, for lack of a better way to put it. Let's do it. I, I want to run this experiment. What did I just undo? Uh-oh, what am I undoing? Oh no. No, please. Okay. Uh, let's remove these ones. It's a lot less visually cluttered this way as well, so I hope it just happens to work. I could probably just copy it from here. I don't know. I don't want to... I want to make sure we avoid any mistakes. Set filters whitelist. No, I, th I think this is right. Except there's a bunch of extra red wire that I find a little off-putting. Okay. Let's go red wire here, plastic. Now then. Oh, I think I see a better way to do this. Can we do our mergey thing here? I think this is what I did before, actually. And then that can go down here with the crushed vulcanite. Uh, except it also has to go over here. Whoops. I think we can probably manage it. Nope, nope, this is, this is nightmare spaghetti. I want to get off Mr. Spaghetti's wild ride. I think the left side isn't connected to Constant Combinator, indeed it is not. Um, so this is going to go... Why can't reds be slightly longer? I'm spoiled now by K2 underground belts. That doesn't look too bad. So do we have room to do it exactly the same way over here? I think we do. Uh, wow, that's actually... Wow, that is way too symmetrical. I love it. I couldn't have dreamed up a better fit here. Uh, 
Okay. Let's bring that over this way. And down here. And there we go. That actually looks pretty cool. Like some kind of Cthulhu belt. Alright, so LTN is going to want to know what we have here. And belts are going to want to know what we have here. And we're going to do... Uh, let's see. Sulfur, crushed, and enriched. 256 stacks over 3 equals 85. Let's call it 80 stacks. Uh, 80 times 50 will allow 4,000 sulfur. Oops, sulfur, not sulfur. Uh, 4k enriched. And they're actually all the same stack size, 4k crushed. Whoop. 4k enriched and 4k crushed. And then copy that there. Let's get our testing input in place. Whoops. Sulfur. I said sulfur, uh, enriched, and crushed, and we're just going to spam that in. Whoa, filters. Um, okay, sulfur, enriched, and crushed. Fantastic. Let's try that again. Looking good. Uh, we might want to remove that first. And we also need this uh, signal over here. Alright, so substations, output filter 2, indeed. Um, I guess the substations are going to go like here. There's definitely not going to be room for tier 1 modules, uh, tier 1 beacons rather. But I'm just not going to worry about that. So, I guess. That doesn't look too bad. Now, let's check if our belts actually work properly. They do not because we don't have the filters on these two. Uh, let's go for... I think I want to go enriched in the middle and sulfur on these two. That looks kind of neat. Uh, I take it back. I want red, red, yellow. on the belts. Except it's going to be the opposite on the outside. Never mind. Uh, 
Alright, so we're going to put red wire jumping across here. And we only need one of these constant combinators. Uh, I'll put it here. Alright. That should be it. Let's get some substation up this way. Uh, we're going to request... Crushed, enriched, and sulfur. It's going into centrifuges. And it's making basically just enriched as far as we're concerned. And we'll need to do uh, two outputs. Two train outputs, that is. Uh, one for one for enriched and one for sand. I don't have room to do another train stop output on the side. Um, I could do a multi station here instead of using the bulk rail loaders, but I think I'll just do a second. Uh, second bulk rail unloader over here, and we can, we won't have room for like just whatever we want over here unless it's to make sand, um, but we can always double this. Wait, what? Why is it two blocks over? Something is off here. Looks like they don't output sand in the box. Maybe there is a really... Maybe there's a prior on the filter inserters. Yeah, I think that's probably it. If we remove the sand filter, we're going to find out real quick. I think we'll start seeing sand. Yep, that's it. Sand in the chest. Well, how about that? I bet it didn't always work this way. Um, I remember a time when doing a chest and, or, or an assembly machine or something and two inserters like this. Uh, at a, after a certain update, these two would take turns as opposed to one of them always getting it if there was a trickle. Uh, I bet it wasn't always like this. What the? Oh no. Oh no. The lowest box has sand? Oh no. So now the only thing I'm confused about is... Oh, I see. It's not actually the middle. It's one. It's one across from the middle. Bruh. So close. In that case, um. I don't actually want to move this, though. Just look at how well this fits together. I mean, I could always. Move this over one pile. Yes, we'll do that. Okay. Um, I think we'll put our substation here. And here. And here. Whoops. And same thing on this side.
Actually, it probably wasn't necessary in the middle of a uh, symmetry. Alright, so that's gonna go here. Uh, whoops. Should pick a dollies this. Oh, wait. Looks mostly pretty neat. That looks much better. Okay. And then we actually need to. Move all of this over. Actually, no, we don't, because it now doesn't encroach on this side. So I didn't need to move this. So if we so desire, we can double this like so. Robot Wars, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Have you missed a lot of the fun? Uh, I guess so. We've been doing... We've been chasing all sorts of uh, squirrels today. Like power problems, which are now well and truly in the past for now. This is entirely on completely free inputs. Like uh, water. Uh, we have a fully automated luxury resupply of... Where's our signal here? We're looking for glass. We've got glass. Oh, it's sulfur. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, we've got fully automated luxury resupply of our trickle of science up here. Oh, we're still waiting on that copper. Let's uh, Let's send it. We're just, this is just to hurry it up a little bit. Including but not limited to data cards from the old Nalva space. Uh, kinda sad how I'm always in school when you stream. I'm sorry. Stay in school, though, I guess. Alright. Oh, that's empty now. Get it out of here. Oops. I think I wasted some. Never mind. Let's go back to the... Actually, let me check on this real quick. Yeah, so that's our science in motion again for now. We are going to need lots of storage. For the way this system works. Uh, but yeah, I've got one cargo rocket supplying all of the basic resources that this thing needs to do its science. Um, and that's going to carry us to, well, I'm going to have to add a few things to it, but that's going to carry us to when we get our little bit of energy one science so that we can get space rail and then we can start really building the orbital base. Let's build this scaffolding so we can expand our power a bit. Not that we're short on power anymore. Fantastic. We got 591 contaminated bio sludge. Beautiful. Okay, back to the design. Um, 
So we need sand to go this way. Let's actually put a filter here. Or not a filter, a splitter. And maybe do it like this. Actually, let's focus on the resource that we want. And that's going to go down here. And then we need loaders. And then we need power. And that's... Wow, that's faster than I thought it would be. How fast is this thing? Uh, Net 14.4 enriched vulcanite per second. That's not that fast. At least in terms of items, but... I imagine it's a decent amount for enriched Vulcanite. We'll see. At least for this stage of the game, it should be overkill. Uh, Alright, so sand. How much sand do we get out of this? Almost nothing? Less than one per second. Okay. Lock that side. Could you check again? Now there is sand in the boxes. Uh, true. Fascinating. Is there anything we did that would have made it? momentarily do we have about the same amount of sand in each one yeah i think i probably momentarily didn't have the uh the red wire connected when i was moving the substations around that's probably what that was Otherwise, it wouldn't have been so consistent before. Let's just double check these belts can keep up. 24... Oh, it's only net 14.4. Um, crushed Vulcanite per second. So I needn't have worried so much about throughput. But I do like this uh, Cthulhu layout here. All right, seems good. Now we're going to do LTN stuff. Enriched Vulcanite provider. Definitely getting tired because that looked purple to me for a second there. Uh, let's see. Oh, this will be a this will be a purple active pickup. Not that the rate we're going to get sand. Not that there's any great urgency here, but it is a byproduct that we need to be removed. Otherwise, it'll theoretically eventually block this. Um. So that is. Send active provider that is enriched volcanic provider that is all set correctly, I think. I actually quite like this build, it's very neat. Yeah, I think it was just the moment that I didn't have red wire connected earlier on. 
Alright. I already did the station name here. And we are looking for... The stack sizes are the same, which is nice. Uh, crushed Vulcanite. 8,000. That's two train loads. Uh, enriched Vulcanite. And Sulfur. And I think that'll be it. This build was easier than I thought it would be. Chest swapping is very, very good for recycled uh, inputs and outputs. Recycled inputs, I guess I should say. Remove the cheat items. And... Enriched... Basic Vulcanite Enrichment. This is probably very likely the exact layout I'll go with when we're onto wide area beacons. Uh, coronal mass ejection headed for Nalvis, five minutes. I don't think we're going to have any trouble considering last I checked the steam was literally full. Uh, Alright. I forgot to do the snap to grid. Snap to grid 86, 24. Don't even have to think about that anymore. And then... Let's put this... I don't know, down here somewhere. Okay, so where are we going to put this? Probably next to... Yeah, right right next to where we make our... Is this actually saturated already? Wow. Okay. We're not getting any more... Um... We're not getting any more enriched vulcanite or stone out of our... Or vanilla core fragments for that matter. Out of our vulcanite core fragment processing. Because we ran out of space um, for the crushed Vulcanite. Alright, uh, let's put... that's mineral water. How dare you. Let's do it down here, I guess. Yeah, that's good. Very short train trip from here to here, using the roundabout. Alright, so first of all, construction train. Pay him a visit. Inactivity, 15 seconds. And I'm going to pick up whatever the mole has to offer me automatically. Oh, probably would help if I didn't dump all of this in here earlier. Alright, I'll mark this for deconstruction. And we'll go help build this. Centrifuges? Oh yeah, centrifuges. Do I even have them? Nope. We haven't done centrifuges yet. Um, media defense installation ammo. Is that low priority? No, it shouldn't be. Where did I put the... No, I think we are on the low priority side. Which is kind of good. Hold on. I cannot find the signal for media defense installation ammo. Oh, there it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the fact that we're doing this means we're on the low priority side. Um, let's do centrifuges on this side. And we want... How many is in this build? 
let's go ra round up from that stack size. Or maybe even double it. Uh, 48. It's only one stack. Okay, centrifuge. Make it 100. They do stack to 50, right? Yeah, they do. Check factory search. I did. We don't have any. Or did I, like, muscle mer- Oh. We have two. Did we just make those, or...? Yeah, I think I muscle memoried something thinking I was doing factory search. I probably checked the logistic network or something. Absolutely loving the construction train. And unlike a Spidertron, I can get it to automatically return once it's stopped doing anything. It's not better than a Spidertron in every way, but it's winning overall, actually. And I love Spidertrons. Coronal mass ejection at Alvis. Let's see. What do you got? Huh? Oh, the steam turbines haven't even kicked in. Really? Well, they will soon. I'm, I'm pretty sure they will soon. Surely we don't have that much solar panel. And just because most of the factory is idle. No way. There's no way. Okay, yeah, accumulators are almost empty. There we go. We're at the peak, though. We're, we're, we're almost completely at the peak before the steam turbines kicked in. Wow. Will it be a problem raw materials are already delivered with the chests? Uh, what do you mean by that? Raw materials are already delivered? Oh, no, no. I've got circuitry here. Like, we calculated a bit more than 80 stacks. I, I limited each of these to 80 stacks. Um, so this, this, this is as full as it gets for crushed vulcanite. Just a bit of circuit wire to control that. Where's my mole? Okay. We are... Out of steel? We're not out of steel. The bots are just rather busy. How many centrifuges do we have? 21. That's not bad. What happened to the two that were down here somewhere? Oh, they're all in... Wait, what? Hold on, what? Do I need to refresh this? There we go. Alright, I'm just gonna take these... Well, then again, it shouldn't be too long before we have what we're looking for here. Give me more concrete. Give me more uh, heat shield. Thirty-five. We're almost 
almost at enough to build the block properly the first time. I don't think it would cause any problems uh, if we were to place fewer centrifuges. But I just feel like building it all properly the first time. That is 47 and at least 48. Fantastic. Will it be a problem? Oh, that question. Yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the overflowing chest problem. It will not. Fantastic. And of course we're waiting on sulfur because there's never enough petroleum. So we've got uh twenty-eight oh never mind. I was gonna say we have twenty-eight refineries going at full speed all the time, but apparently that's not quite true. There's still... there's no power that's going on. That's not connected. Well, that would probably help. Yeah, there's like a few... there's just a few power poles missing down where we put crude oil uh, into the rail network. So the crude oil that goes straight to a certain set of refineries is working just fine, but this that goes into the rail network had no power. Very, very little power because it was connected to some wind turbines. It was never really connected? Yeah. So, like, I hadn't, I, I didn't actually get around to getting this block working for a long time. Uh, and this is the first block that actually has deliveries come in from the rail network, or is dependent on them. Because uh, the other one has pipe just s squeezed up this way, because it was from before we had our rail network. Uh, and it obviously took a while, under the circumstances, to notice uh, that there was actually a problem. Speaking of which, at least we found that one pump jack uh, wasn't connected. And look at that, almost immediately uh, a train leaves with 50k crude oil. And we're almost back up to 50k again already. So now I can honestly say we've got 28 uh, oil refineries going at full speed all the time. Mix2C3, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Okay. Uh, I think that's just about going to do it for today, though. I'd really like to see some sulfur here. Oh, not to mention enriched vulcanite. That's going to take a little while. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Um. I think it needs a hand to get started. It's like if I did Coverex with, uh, train blocks. Oh, let's just put it all in here. And what about sulfur? Sulfur is coming. Alright, let's bump up the priority on this one temporarily. Because I really want to see it working.
please don't run out of... And it's gone. Okay, never mind. Uh, I could set the request threshold a bit lower. Or the provide threshold. Actually. Just until a train is scheduled. Wow, that was fast. I didn't even have half a moment to take a sip. It's going to the mall? Don't go to the mall. Go to... this one. Fantastic. I didn't even remember that we were requesting at the mall for sulfur. Priority level 1. That's a lower priority than 10. What the hell? Oh, I set it to provide priority instead of request priority. That's on me. All right. Let's see who we're going to raid today. Who's streaming Factorio? We've got... Hobbit, Andy, Intertooth. How's our train doing? Oh, here we go. Here we go. Uh, this is going to feed itself, though, if I don't... We've already got it holding onto Enriched Vulcanite, so we don't have to worry about future deliveries here. Um, so we're going to do Encoded Network ID 1 and Encoded Network ID 2. So that trains won't pick up enriched vulcanite from here and bring it back up this way. Evening, sir. Good day, JP. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Alright, that's actually... It actually gets started a hell of a lot faster than Coverex. Probably just because we have more... Mostly because we have more enriched... Vulcanite to start with. Uh, but yeah, who shall we raid? Let's go with... I don't think we've raided that blue for a minute. Let's see how it goes. Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of the Blueprints if you're into that. If you have any questions or anything, by all means. And until next time, stay safe. Take care, D-Hose. Tomorrow we'll be doing Terraria. Wait, it is Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow we'll be doing Terraria. A couple of days after that we'll be doing Oxygen Not Included. And a couple of days after that we'll be back to Space Exploration. Just got here? I'm sorry, Marshmallow. Alright, I'll leave you in the hands of JetBlue. Take care, guys. That's why, that's why we're going to start nice and early in the morning, but we'll start- oh! Holy hell!